This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we've got reviews for Matrix Resurrections and the Hawkeye Season 1 finale. Geek boner! Plus, Rugboy is back to give us his thoughts on Spider-Man No Way Home as we discuss the film's staggering box office and the potential for Andrew Garfield to finally get his third Spidey movie. All that and more in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, December 27th, 2021. <laughs> you know who this is, and you know why you're here. You want all the latest comic book and superhero TV and movie news, and by God, you found it. Forget everything else out there. Forget all the Scientology bullshit. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. Worship at the feet of the holy trio of geekdom. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. Play it. Check. Check one. All right. This is Roy really Crabs out there. Let's give it up. Hello, what's up, listener? Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. And joining us, he's back, listener. He's refreshed. He's restuffed with some fresh cotton. This is not a variant. This is this universe's rug boy. What's up, Rugs? Hey, it's me, Matt Delhauer. Yeah. Oh, no. Now we have you doing that, Delhauer. No, I'm just kidding. It's me. I'm back, guys. Hello. I'm super confused. Is this Matt? Is this Matt Delhauer doing Rugs? Yes. I'm in a closet right now. (laughs) and It's really hot in here. And I'm broadcasting. Shout out to Delhauer. My cat's bothering me. Oh, boy. Get out of here, cat. Yeah, I, pussy, think that's my, I think that's all I remember from what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that's his best Delhauer impression. Oh, you're yeah. doing a cat thing because of Delhauer. Oh. Huh. Well, that's all I remember. I'm trying to remember anecdotes of when uh, he'd be on and what he would say. He'd... Uh, yeah, what else? What else? What are some defining Delhauer characteristics? <laughs> oh, my God. That's a good question. He gets really fucking passionate, like when he's describing something. That's what I remember. That's what I've. Uh... I just love when he goes. No, it's not Imran. And he says he definitely does that once every time he's on. <laughs> he does do that. He yeah. does disagree with you occasionally. <laughs> That's the best. But everyone disagrees with you. That's nothing. New. Hey, it's a free world. You can do what you want. I don't give a fuck. Uh, listen. It's we- up Seth Morgan. He never disagrees. Him and Justin Zwerner. All hail Justin Zwerner. Uh, because he says all hail King Imran. Nothing Game like over. just <laughs> deep cut. Facebook group, private group only. <laughs> only the Facebook cuts. group people yeah. will get that, uh, and the new listeners will get that. No, yeah, Zwer- Zwerner, you got to come in and, and face your king in the Discord one of these I days. I need you to bow down in front of me in the Discord, Justin Zwerner. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we just need him on video, on loop, <laughs> doing that, <laughs> bowing down over and over like he's pl- praying to Mecca. When So, for the listener who doesn't know, when you join our Facebook group, we will welcome you with a post, and Justin Zwerner will, without fail, type in capital letters... All hail King Imran. Oh, and it's my favorite part of the Facebook group. I got to tell you. So more people join because I can't I don't get tired of reading. That. Do you feel bad getting left out, Anthony, that you're not even part of the court? You're just uh, Imran superseded you. That's fine. In ranking. He does. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I'm sure Anthony, when he's out, you know, at a, at a you know, doing shots off of a woman's. <laughs> Yeah, he's Boobs. really hurting when he's out <laughs> he really doing cares. body shots. I was going to say something along those lines. Yeah. Of yeah. Not having, <laughs> if, if, if Rimrock can have one little sandbox to be the king of, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think he's feeling bad because every time I look at his Instagram stories, there's a girl holding bottles of champagne with sparklers coming out of her. Yeah. And I don't know what's going <laughs> it's on. It's always the 4th of July. It's always there. there's like just <laughs> chicks around and fireworks and they're in a club. I don't know what the hell's going on. There's lasers. It's always lasers. It's possible bottle service gets you. You know. Anyways, enough about living vicariously through Anthony's life. We have right. a lot to discuss. <laughs> Let's get to it. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. Okay. Here's what we're going to do this week, everybody. Uh, of course, if you <laughs> listened to us last week, you saw our long, in-depth review. You heard. You didn't see. You heard of Spider-Man No Way Home with the Ginger Geek. seven-hour show. Matt Delhauer. Yes. And, you know, Ruggs wasn't feeling well. He He wasn't there. And we just had... Kind of a fucking love fest. We sucked Marvel's dick pretty hard. 
last episode and it was great, right? But as with all things, when you get high, you know what happens on the other side. You got to come down and get grounded. Uh, are, you, are you already previewing that Ruggs is going to hate talk about how much he hates? The this movie? is where Rug Boy comes in. I'm not saying he's going to hate the movie. I'm saying Ruggs' job is to keep us grounded. And, you know, now that we've come off the high, yeah, maybe there's a couple of things that are fun to make fun of because they don't make any sense. So, Ruggs, gather your thoughts because I know the listeners. Oh, my dying. God. I, I'm not even prepared for this. OK, wait, I'll give you a few minutes. Well, I know we the- only talked about this last week. We only, we only said we wanted you to do this yeah. like eight days ago. Yeah. I didn't think about it. No, he doesn't, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I didn't think about it. <laughs> I got big fish to fry over Just here. read your tweets over. Yes. Oh, no. uh, you, okay, yeah, so you uh, do you want me to do this? No, 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 hold on. It? Wait, before we get to that, I just want to update everybody on the yeah. fucking monies this movie is making. On Christmas, it passed a billion dollars. Oh, shit. That's the big fucking story. In a pandemic. In a pandemic, this movie reaches a billion dollars. I got a bunch of crazy stats in 12 days. Tying the record of Force Awakens set uh, to become the third fastest movie to reach a billion dollars. Avengers Infinity War did it in 11 days. Avengers Endgame, I don't know if you guys remember, five fucking days. Five days it hit a billion dollars. I know you're going to make this point, but I'm going to bring it up now. do it. This movie could have even done better if it wasn't COVID, although I don't think, it felt like the theaters didn't care. No, the the COVID was barely a fucking thing. But you're going to mention this even without China. Yes, this is a big deal. We talked about how none of the Marvel movies came out of China. Without China, this movie th- hits a billion dollars. Uh, to put things in perspective, 49 movies have earned more than a billion dollars globally. But Spider-Man No Way Home, one of only five movies to do so without China. Oh, shit. That is insane. That's kind of crazy. Wow. It is the highest grossing movie of 2021. It's the first movie since Rise of Skywalker in 2019 to cross a billion dollars. And domestically, uh, it has already made $470 million. That is more than far from home made its entire domestic run already. Well, Where does this thing top off? I feel like $1.5 billion, no problem. Easy peasy right now. Yeah, I think well, I think one point five. I, I'm a, the only thing that I think might hold it back is the Omicron variant. Is everyone's hearing more and more how you know transmissible this is? So I think there there could be some of that where people went in and got to see it, and now they're like, well, the variant's really crazy. I'm not going to go out and see it again. And starting next month here in Chicago and Cook County, they have done this uh, vaccine mandate where right. you're going to have to show proof of negative test or vaccine to go into movie theaters and restaurants and a lot of inside entertainment venues well for what it's worth though new york and la i believe they've been doing that, that already while, yeah we so. they haven't right. been doing that here i know but, but what i'm saying is if, if the two biggest media markets yeah. have already been yeah. doing that and it got to a billion yeah. i'm not sure how much of an effect that will have it'll affect it but you know so odds of it hitting two billion i don't know what it'll are. get close but not i don't think it'll quite hit that mark wasn't I right about the opening though? Uh, you were closest, right. You were, right? You were, you were the closest. closest. Absolutely. You said one seventy five, right? No, you said uh, over two hundred. I, I believe. Oh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I believe yeah, I don't you were. I was almost close when I fucked up the math and I said. I think that you changed your mind, and then I changed my yeah, mind. Yeah. and went and went up over you again. Two hundred and sixty million dollar opening weekend over Christmas. It made another eighty four million dollars over the three day Christmas holiday. Yeah, and. Uh, Early spoiler for for later on, but Matrix Resurrections yeah. did not do did not give it any competition. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and it, well, I didn't expect it to. You got to feel bad for that movie. It's making nothing. I think it made like twenty dollars so far. I don't know, twenty five <laughs> maybe. Uh, no. Okay, so with that being said, Rugs, I'm gonna actually shut up for a few minutes. Oh, he, it, it, I, I don't know if he can do this. I don't and know if you he can don't not hear from me. me, it's because I'm dead. I died on my own dry <laughs> spittle because I have that he, condition. He swallowed his own tongue yes, trying to not I talk. I choked on my dry throat because I'm trying not to interrupt. But you have the floor. Give us your review and end with a number, a ranking, whatever. Give us your thoughts. Go. I'll, I'll start with a little bit of a metaphor. Okay. So uh, on your 30th birthday... You uh, come home expecting to get a present from your girlfriend, but she has forgotten your birthday. There's no party. Um, 
and you're like flabbergasted that that would happen. And then she finds out, oh, fuck, I forgot your birthday. Uh, let me make it up to you. Let me take you out. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll wear a slutty outfit. I'll blow you. You know, I'll do it all. I'll do all the things that you wanted me to do on your 30th birthday. I'll, I'll, I'll arrange a, uh, a quick party. I'll invite all the friends that you wanted to see. And I'll make it up to you. And that's basically what Spider-Man No Way Home is. Hmm. It's um, yeah. it's uh, MCU forgot everyone's birthday. Um, they made Peter Parker a, sh- you know, it's more evident in this movie because of all the other Spider-Man and all the other things that you see in this movie that are Peter Parker and all of the kind of gymnastics they have to get go through to get Peter Parker to be one of those three guys. You know what I mean? Like the those two guys. Oh, wait, sit spoiler there. alert. I should probably have said, right? Oh, Spoiler alert. I didn't say uh, I didn't say who the three guys no, are. Didn't. It's still co- it's still good. And and it's been everybody knows. If you're listening to this show, yeah. you've probably seen them. Just in case. Yeah. Okay. Um so previous to the movie, if they had all those three guys sit down, they would not have a lot in common. But I mean, you have one that's a veritable rock star, and the other two are who are despised by the city that they uh now you could say in this movie that Peter Parker is despised because of Mysterio and stuff like that. But I feel like a lot of that um, writing and all of that is kind of suspect because it, it doesn't ring true to me because you're in the Marvel universe. Nobody really cares about their alter ego. Uh, Aunt May knows that Peter Parker's Spider-Man. All of his friends know that he's Spider-Man. So he's got no one to really hide it from. There's no like, oh, my God, my aunt, if she finds out that I'm Spider-Man, it's all over for me. Or if the guy I work for, he doesn't work for J. Jonah Jameson, finds out that I'm Spider-Man. There's none of that drama. There's no reason for him to even care that Mysterio exposed him. And and even and even in the in the thing, like Daredevil says, well, they can't make this stick. There's no you didn't really do a crime. So you're not really in any danger. So the whole thing kind of is now predicated on that. He cares about his friends so much that they didn't get the, into the college that they they wanted to get into, that he has to go and do this, ask Dr. Strange. And he's like, yep, yeah, I'm going to just uh, change the entire world to, to, like, make this happen for, like, this white person problem, basically. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just so far removed from Peter Parker. It's just so. And so it, it basically it takes um, Aunt May dying for him to have something to be sad about for him to even feel like Peter Parker. And then obviously he has to make the sacrifice, which is he has to sacrifice his friends, which gets him further into a real Spider-Man. Yeah. Like what, what, what the stakes are for Peter Parker on a daily basis. Um, With that said, so I know that it is incredulous for me to be like, this is a great spider movie, Spider-Man movie because of how much this is. It's like somebody miss, missing out on your birthday and trying to make it up to you. And I felt like, okay, okay, you didn't remember my birthday, but at least you tried. And so I, I'm never going to fully forgive it, but I did have a good time out there. I did get, I did like blowing my load in your face. I did like doing all that. I did enjoy that experience. And uh, the theater experience alone is what um, is number one, like absolutely something unforgettable, right? It was a great theater experience. I love the theater experience. The fact that the Marvel was able to manipulate me in that fashion, knowing full well that at once thinking about it, I saw it twice once thinking about it and going, Whoa, this is really like, they're really like trying really hard to make this work. So I give them the credit for that. Like they, they generally like, they asked you to like do a lot with them. They asked you like, okay, don't think about this. Don't think about that. Okay. Don't think about where all these guys are coming from and what timelines are coming from and what's going to happen to them after they go back because of what Dr. Strange. Don't think about any of those things, but just have fun with us. You know, don't like forget that I forgot your birthday. I have an analogy real quick before for that. They basically like took a blindfold on you, put the blindfold on. And you rode like this bumpy ass road for an hour and a half. And they're like, trust me, the place we're going is really cool. Yeah. 
Uh, but you're not gonna be able, you're not you're gonna be so disturbed by what's happening this entire time until we get there. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's not a bad analogy either. But as I said, the theater experience was fun. It was nice to see um, these, uh, you know, Toby and Andrew Garfield back. It made me think about how Andrew Garfield's portrayal of Peter Parker was just great. Yeah. Even though he had terrible movies, not terrible in every sense, but like he deserved a better. He was like the best actor out of all of them. Right. Absolutely. And uh, he plays the best, most Spider-Man like like Spider-Man. And uh, I think that he could be a little bit more nerdy, a little bit more weird as Peter. But like, I think he could easily do that. I don't think that's out of his wheelhouse. Toby Maguire tried to make a, 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 a schism between the two where like Peter Parker and Spider-Man are not the same person. Tom Holland literally does not try to be anything other than he's the same person as Peter Parker, as he is Spider-Man. Right. There, there is no persona. There is no. So I, I feel like that Garfield at least tried that a little bit. Um, and I think it works better. Um, the fact that they decided to heal and cure these bad guys was kind of a cool meta thing as well. Yeah. Even though I don't know if it worked in, would that be the way that it would actually play out? Um, would, you know, I, I obviously we don't know what's going to happen to them when, once they get sent back in time, they could be getting sent back to their death. Like, so we cured them so they could have a moment of being cured. Like, we don't know what we have no idea how, you know, their returns are going to be. Um, also, the Spider-Men, they seem like they're from different timelines, too. Like, they're, you know, they've already killed these people. Like, they've already, like, Tobey Maguire's already killed the Goblin. Right. He's already done it. Like, it's so, it's like, it's kind of weird that that Goblin is not older. Well, because he's dead. It just was weird. Very strange to kind of, like, uh, feel like it make made sense writing-wise. But as I said. Got the blindfold on. You're going to the fucking party. You're there. Don't think about it. You're having a good time. I had a good time. I'm not going to say I didn't. I did. I had a great. I had a great wow. time watching it. Wow, you had a good time. I can't believe it. <laughs> I did. The, I said I imagine had a good time. Uh, the thing at is, the movie theater. The thing is, it's like it's a fun movie. It's fun. You can have. You can. You can get swept up in it. Yeah. You can get swept up in all of the nostalgia. You can get. Swept up in all like the fact that they have like, you know, William Defoe is there and you got uh Alfred Molina. They're all killing it. They're all trying. Um Aunt May's death scene, I thought it was weird, but whatever. Like, I don't know. I just the they they kind of like stretched it out too long, I think. Um they should have um I don't know, it was just weird. I was like, I felt like are they they are they fucking with us? I, I I know her hands were shaking and this and that, and there was like a a couple of tells there, but like I I felt like yeah, did, there could have been just like maybe a, a, a one like oh falling down a little bit and getting back up or like or something else, another another thing there that would make would make it ring more true to me. But overall, I think everything was pretty good. I I, I but the the thing that I liked the most was. Um, Spider-Man hit people with his fists. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he hit the lot. shit out of people with his. Fists. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's fucking go, Spider-Man. Like, can fucking he's he he knocks people the fuck out. That's what he's been doing since uh I've been reading these comics in the fucking eighties and nineties. He's been always been like knocking motherfuckers out, but he so. consciously holds back too. Like they all hold, they know how strong they are. And yeah, Garfield makes the comment how he pull, he stopped pulling his punches. Yeah, right. But they know when to hold back and when not to. Right. Yeah. But I, but he wasn't even really doing that. Right. In, in other no. movies. Yeah. No, he was. They didn't have him punching at all. So, um, I was happy to see that. I was happy to see him get rid of the Tony Stark stuff, even though like he had like a Tony Stark make anything machine, and that was like integral to the plot. That's true. <laughs> they was um, a little Stark tech. You know, it was like I, when they were in the school lab and they were sciencing. I was like, all right, that's more Spider-Man. That's great. But it, it, everything had like a concession, right? Like you had, okay, you need all the Stark tech to get a lot of it going. Blah blah blah. You need Doctor Strange to act like like a complete idiot. Oh, another thing is that like. 
they didn't get to M- into MIT, but like fucking literally like Tony Stark was a big proponent of MIT and like fucking happy as his limo driver and pepper pots could, you know, all that, all that stuff. Like, you know, like that he's an Avenger. Like they're not going to stop him from going to MIT. Like, I don't know. It's just a weird thing, but it was just a weird, that, that whole setup was weird. And, and the, another, the last criticism that I have is that, um, Ned Leeds could do magic. Oh, he could do magic. Sure. Why not? And then like the Mary Jane Watson thing that they forced in there for no apparent reason. Like, um, I was like, well, they're trying to make some kind of statement with that. But like, I was like, I like, nobody cares. Yeah. And why are you doing it? it? That's definitely like another fan service thing for some certain fans. But, uh, I think action wise, it was pretty good. It was, uh, I think, uh, there were some brutal fights in the building with Green Goblin on the, uh, uh, that final fight on the shield was, was pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he was gonna, he's gonna <laughs> kill him with the fucking glider. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty badass. And, um, but the thing that really made it great for me was seeing Daredevil cameo, Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield, uh, you know, kind of having those moments together where they're kind of sharing experiences, talking about the web fluid and sharing their experiences about Gwen and how he couldn't save her and he doesn't pull his punches and he became angry and blah, blah, blah. I would love to see that movie. Oh, yeah. Like that movie. I was like, I'll watch that. Well, case, I do. You know, we can talk about that after you give your review, because I do want to talk about so yeah, the future of these too. guys. If I'm going to rank this. Yeah. In uh, Spider-Man movies, I would probably it's in my top four. OK, probably. Yeah. You got Spider-Man two. Yeah. You got Spider-Man one. Yeah. Then you got into the Spider-Verse than this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then the next one is Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. I had it in like top three. Yeah. So it was good. I I would probably give it a, a, an eight. Oh, yeah. Wow. That, that's uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, give it an eight. I, 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 I could tell from his tweets that he liked the movie, but yeah. You know, he also, you know, a drug boy. So he also has his. He ain't giving it a nine. Fuck you. He ain't giving it a nine. No, it's (laughs) it's it's high for him. I did. Especially for Tom Holland, MCU Spidey. Right, right. But there was, you know, the theater experience was a, a, I needed it really bad. I needed that theater experience so bad. And I was happy that it came. And um, I was happy to see my old friends, you know, uh, you know, I was happy to see William Dafoe. I was happy to see Toby. I was happy to see hey, those are part of my childhood, you know, not not mm-hmm. my not my childhood, but like my my teenhood, right. or my 20 hood. Let, let, let me ask you something. Are you it took a lot. And I, I know you 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 probably were the biggest one on the show complaining about it because it never you never thought he felt like Spider-Man. They took three movies. Well, it took six movies, actually, if you yeah. include his cameos, his stuff in other movies. But he's here. Right. Do, do you do you finally feel like he's in a place where he's actually Spider-Man now? Well, I I feel like that they still forgot my birthday. It doesn't, it <laughs> oh, no. doesn't change that they forgot my birthday. They forgot. They forgot uh, the the essence of those for in, of what he was those first couple. Yeah, of I mean they could never get it back. Right. It's gone. Like they burnt everything. So it's like, yes, he's got. Yes, he's in, in a shitty apartment now. Yes, he's got a cloth suit. Yeah, nobody knows nobody him. Nobody knows him. Nobody knows who he is. He, you remember? I, he can now. He can work for J. Jonah Jameson selling pictures of himself. He could do that. He now. can do everything right. you want him to do. Now. Yeah. So right. I think it's a great it's just a three. It was a it took the, forever to get here. The, the, yeah, it took forever. And the, the the I don't think this was the case. I think they actually adjusted on the fly. And, and to credit to Marvel, I think they do sometimes listen to fans and adjust. Because I think there was that criticism. But the, the the fence I've heard is this was a three origin, three movie origin story. I don't think that was I don't think that's what they were trying to do. I think they just I don't adjusted. think it was their intention. Yeah. I just think that they got what happened was. Yeah, they got people to enjoy this version of Spider-Man. But I think that anybody who really loves Spider-Man, it's got to, under the surface, got to bother them. Mm -hmm. And if you're Marvel and you got all these people that are, like, responsible for, like, creating great Spider-Man stories going, "Eh, it's not really Spider-Man. And it's not like, oh, because the people like it, they're like, oh, that satisfies them. That's like like something that is... 
the essence of the character. Anybody who's written the character besides Dan Slott um, <laughs> knows that there's things that about as much as we're in, we're going to be talking about this in the matrix as much as that the world wants to not define anything anymore. As much as the world wants to say anything can be anything, sometimes something is something, and it can only be that one thing. And that's it. And you have to, and, and you could deny it all you want, but everyone's coming out of this movie thinking that Tom Holland's a better Spider Man. Yeah. There's no one coming out going, well, I like them, you know, I think he was more, he had more pathos when he, when he got everything he wanted all the time. <laughs> and you know had had a fucking suit that could do everything. It's you know, just, I don't, but it's just as he's had more time with it than the others. Also, just by default, kind of makes him the best Spider Man in some. He's in the eyes. most movies, yeah. As Spider Man. So, speaking of that, all right, I'm glad we got your review and that's your the thoughts. longest we've ever. I got to give you kudos, Imran. You I never, you you never interrupted. No, oh, wow. I said I'm gonna shut the fuck up, but. I want to talk about Andrew Garfield because yes. his fucking uh, his meter is on the rise a little bit. And really, there's a lot of. Well, yeah, you can. Finish. I'm just saying, like, he was a kind of a revelation. The more I think about how much I enjoyed him, how good he is, how I kind of he's playing like a mid 30 year old Peter Parker. Well, is Spider Man. Yeah. The whole idea is that you're not supposed to know he's a kid. Right. When he takes off the back, oh, you're you're just a kid. Well, he's 38 though, so I don't know why he's calling but, him a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the early issues yeah. of Spider Man, yeah. they're like, oh, he's you know, like whenever he, oh, you you're, had no idea you're younger than I thought you would be. Yeah, but at a certain point, he's fucking Spider Man. He's a dude, but you know, but you realize how much he's got hair on his balls. Like <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got, he needs a manscape trimmer. You does. realize how much his potential was wasted in those Mark Webb movies yeah, after so this movie. There's a to, to build on what Imran is saying, there's a lot, especially on social media, there's a lot of drumming up now of give Andrew Garfield another Spider-Man movie, yes. right? So, like, yes. you know, it, it was kind of, as Imran mentioned, it was kind of a revelation, although it was always there. He yeah. was just in the bad movies. Like, yeah. It wasn't his fault, but he seemed to have taken the role in this one as kind of like a redemption type thing. And you could tell every scene, he's super magnetic. Like, he is just acting his ass off. Yeah. And, and he's playing it. a and he's playing a version of Peter that, frankly, we haven't really seen too often, which is yeah. kind of like a, a a super depressed, like somewhat unhinged because he mentions pull not pulling his punches and being it's bitter dark. and rageful, he is like yeah, dark. And like he kind of because his his movie his movie ends in a way that would put him in that state, but it's a different state of Spider Man than we're all used to seeing. So yeah, he definitely brought it. And to round out the point that I'm trying to make here is. Sony's been trying to want to have a Spider-Man in their Sony-verse, and I think they inadvertently might have created an option where they can have their own Spider-Man. Yes, this is If he is wants great. to come back to it. You know, and I was like, I remember, like, for years I've been like, just cast an adult Spider-Man in this universe, and you have your teen Spider-Man here. He could be the Spider-Man that ends up in Morbius and Venom. You know, it's only fair. The other two guys got three solo movies. He got fucked. Give him at least one more. And put him with a good script and a good director. That's My the God. only thing I'm concerned about is is if it's Sony's hands. Yeah. Like I kind of want Marvel to still help them out. Yeah. Because they gave they gave that character a lot to do in in No Way Home. Yeah. Like he he had a lot of personal redemption moments yep. for closure. himself. Closure, lots See, of closure. With the uh, Andrew Garfield movies, they didn't really forget the birthday, but they gave you the shittiest gift. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he had a great suit, but everything like they else remembered was a mess. the birthday. They they tried they got a lot of the touchstones, but then they gave you like this stupid baggage that you did not need. He's got no. socks and underwear for presents. And um That's that it. kind of Well, they they were trying to I I've done a lot of thinking about that. Those movies were made as Delhar mentioned last week to to keep the rights right, but they were also like they were in a kind of a weird no win situation. They were rebooting a movie that had only come out like four yeah. years ago, yeah, and they were trying to do different things for different sake, yeah, without actually like it's not actually better. Like they went they went okay, we'll we'll focus on Peter's parents, but no one no one gives a fuck about Peter's. No, parents. that it was the matter. worst fucking idea ever. <laughs> it, Meanwhile, it, well, that's the whole thing. It's like you you, you don't want. You don't want 
um, Spider-Man to have any reason for just being there, then it's just this fluke. Right. Like, now it's not preordained. Like, yeah. when they... When Straczynski tried to write the other, like he was preordained right. to get these spider powers. Right, with Ezekiel, right. Like no one liked that. Like no, no one fucking liked that. All right. Like you, well, how do we shake up? Spider- you don't need to shake up Spider-Man. And like no one's going, no one's clamoring for the other to be made. Like, oh, do the other where he's the totem. Like no one gives a fuck about that. So some things don't need to be fixed. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what they tried to do there. And they did the same thing with, MCU Peter, you know they yeah, didn't do the Uncle Ben. Yeah, well, they I don't know what their their purpose of changing it so much. I, it's just they took a long weird route. Uh, like, I don't know a, why a why Uncle why ben would moment. Marvel does Ben even exist in this fucking universe? Does he even have an Uncle Ben? Nah, no, he doesn't. But like, no, he doesn't. But, well, I think so. Yeah, but like, why would they change? I think the reason that they changed him so much is that I feel like MCU. Disney owns Marvel is trying to create things that to bringing every the old and the new all this new audience to the to table and they just wanted to make Peter more likable. They wanted to make him cute. They wanted to make him lovable. And they didn't want him like weigh him down with all of this fucking angst and shit. They just wanted him to be like this fun little happy dude. Mm. And um they didn't want him to be poor, like or or or, or, as, or as an outcast or whatever. Like that, he has friends and this and that. So I think that they um they softened him up. And when they went to do this Andrew Garfield thing, they just wanted to make him, I guess, Spider Man more sexy. So you got the sexy Spider Man, you got the kid Spider Man, and then you got the sad sack Spider Man, which is something <laughs> required. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there's somewhere between the two of them, Garfield and Maguire, yeah. is the actual perfect Spider-Man. Yeah, I think Andrew yeah. does it best. I, yeah. I, especially after seeing this poor performance, I think he does it best. Again, poor, poor all around full filmmaking around him. But even watching, I watched Spider-Man: No Way Home three times. Yeah, the scenes where he's Spider-Man, and you mentioned this in one of your tweets, Rugs, is where he's even in in this movie where he's still kind of like a bit depressed. And you can tell he's not very confident in himself. You know, the scene where Toby's telling him, no, you're amazing and all that. He's going through it. He's going through Peter, a lot. Peter number three. I know. But even when he has the mask on, there's he's running by. And it's little things that Andrew does really well. Like he's running by to pick up the cure. Yeah. And he picks it up. He goes, hey. Yeah. Like he, picks, no, he, yeah. he like picks it up and he's just like so enthusiastic. And then like he's fighting Lizard. And he's like, wait, your turn, Lizard. And he's like, yeah. I'll be right back. Snapping him with a web. Yeah. He's like, I'll be right back. Right. That's perfect. And like perfect. all those little things. It's like, still perfect. Toby and Tom don't really do those yeah. things where they're in, when they're in costume. So he still like has that magic of like. Being depressed and being Spider Man. I don't think that either of those guys can deliver it. No, uh, and it rang true. Garfield no, yeah. is so good. Like but you, he's I, also the best actor. He's the be- he's easily the best actor out of the three of them, which is crazy. He's so like I, an Academy Award nominated actor. Yeah, and all of his movies, he's really good. And he takes think it about, seriously, yeah. which, he, which a lot of these like Academy Award actors that get put into these roles, right? They like look at it as like this is my time to ham it up. But he like legit looks at it and goes, "No, I'm still going to act." He gets it as Spider Man, and I love that people want to see so more do, of him. I want to see so him. Do back. you want to see it? Do, would you advise Sony to to do this? Yes. Yeah, I would. He, him, I think you. I think you strike the. If he wants to do it, you strike the iron while it's hot, and you give you invest a lot in terms of like a good script with a good director. How do they fix it though? With this history that they have, like that that predates. Like this character. Well, do you do an amazing Spider Man three or yeah, I think do you, you do, do a three? A new... I think you do a three, but you you do it with this version of him where he's come back and like he's years out. later. No, no. Well, he's come back from No Way Home. Oh, and he's he's like helped out, you know, t- uh, Toby and and Tom. But he's come back. But in his world, the ver- universe he's come back to, he's been fucking nuking people. Like he's lost, he lost his way. He so even like says everybody that. is like scared of him, maybe. Yeah, and, like yeah. he's like he's like lost his way, and he's yeah. got to like redeem who the hell Spider Man is in this universe. Oh, I like that. Now is this the it's same? Kinda, and it's like very meta, right? Like he's yeah. got he's got another. You also kind of like write it in a way. It's like he's got an opportunity to write the wrongs of the past films in his in another movie. He's got to fix his own reputation. And he's got to find himself. So this could be the universe where you do, you know, it'd be amazing. This is what you do. This is the universe where Morbius and Venom live. Yes. And then you tie, and then you tie that into 
Craven's Last Hunt, where Craven does kill him and bury him and puts his suit on. I, I think you do dark. It. Holy if shit. If he wants to do it, you do it. Fuck, and you know, he's 38, but he could easily pay like an early 30s Peter Parker as an adult going through this. I mean, um, we've already seen in Spider Verse a fat, like 40 year old yeah, Spider Man. So it's Peter B. Johnson, yes. He's you don't a, have to be Spider kid anymore. He reminded me of that Spider Man a lot, that Peter B. Peter B. Parker and Into the yeah. Spider Verse, you know? And I was like, man, he, he was fucking so good. He was wasted. I want to see more. Well, but nobody's talking about Toby also. Do we want to well, do anything with Toby more? Or you don't need to do it. No, he's good. He's like the he's old, good. big bro- older brother, yeah. retired. He kind of got his moments of closure, too. Like, he saves Goblin. He, c- he cures Goblin. Yeah. He gets a nice little moment with us. Uh, um, with Doc. Doc, Doc yeah. where they yeah. talk, have that little exchange. So he, yeah, he's, he's got closure. He's, and he's good. And, and he's and he even says he's like making it work with MJ. So there's nothing oh, like right, right, right. really to mine there. Yeah, that universe is fine. Right. Yeah, I think that it's good to give you give him a little bit of like an epilogue. Like, okay, he we know where we, he ended up. You know, he's he seems to be pretty together and relaxed. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very he seems very unflappable. Like he was just like, all right, we're gonna go do this, and I, we, he was always soft spoken in, yes. the, in the other film. Yeah, I think so. I think that's just Toby Maguire's acting style. Yeah, He's that, very yeah. even keeled, yeah. even when he's supposed to be excited or emotional. It's just Toby being Toby. <laughs> he's always been that awkward kind of feel. Um, also, reports coming out that uh, they plan to uh, do an Oscars Best Picture push. Uh, I like that. this year and Tom Holland's open to hosting the Oscars if they're going to do the Oscars I thought it, it's on a short list for like visual effects and some other things already for okay. the Oscars I mean if the, you know Black Panther being the only superhero movie well Marvel movie get best picture Oscar I, I, have, I have a couple thoughts on this real quick I don't know if it, it would be great I don't know if I have it a couple of thoughts it. yes it definitely doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Right? Objectively, yeah. it's not. There's a lot of things that you can poke holes with. Yes. That being said. Yeah. The Oscars are a rating sinkhole right now. Right. And they're the Oscars have now moved to 10 movies. So it's guaranteed 10 movies. Yeah. Like you have to. They've been. It's been seven to 10 the last few years, but they've always been like eight, nine. You have to have 10. The Oscars are notoriously don't really honor big budget blockbuster movies now i think dune will probably get a nomination so that's yeah gonna be okay yeah but if the oscars want to like drum up interest in movies again in terms of of getting people to watch the oscars i think you attach your rocket ship to spider-man no way home I mean, and you just would, do it what yeah, the fuck why not they, you can they want to be hip but it, you don't it, need to make. You don't need could, to, but it, 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 that would completely smash my cre- the credibility of the Oscars. For well, me. you don't need it to win. No, but if just you just nominate, it. it deserves to be recognized for what, literally bringing people back to the theaters in a big way. The experience, like you said, you know, a movie that you know you can have an Oscar movie that makes you cry and cheer. That's that's the best picture Oscar movie. There's no other movie but that came out that makes you cry and cheer on, and jump up and but down. But it's predicated on a on a gimmick. Right, it's predicated it, you, on like twenty years of it, other movies. Yeah, it's a predicated on a gimmick. You got what other, in what other universe do you have? I mean, you could make a Batman movie with all the Batman in it. They're you know, probably, they're all they're still alive. They're making that. It's called Flashpoint. <laughs> you know, but like, um, like you got three Spider Men, right? Spider-Man. So it, yes, yeah, you got a, you got them all in the same movie, and you got all the bad guys from the same. You know, it's it's a gimmick at the end of the day. It's a gimmick that works incredibly well, is, but it's a gimmick. Is it any different than like the third Lord of the Rings movie but that got an Oscar nomination? If you're talking about big budget, you know, blockbuster movies getting right. Well, the third Lord of the Rings movie was a culmination of trying to bring a classic novel yeah. to life. Yeah. And it did it brilliantly. This is a culmination of 20 years of fucking Spider-Man movies. Kind of. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just a gimmick. Like I want to be mad. And yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe it's because of I'm still on the high, but I'm also yes. looking at this like the Oscars. They need some. They need people something. aren't watch, and I think this year even more so than last year. Like, would they know. do it? Probably they yeah. might. I don't know sure. if they would. It, it, the old boys club is still kind of, but the like I the, I haven't seen any. I haven't I haven't watched any of the Oscar nominated movies. You I have not have gonna, you? I, I yeah. know, I, and I think it's. 
I think yeah, they're in even a worse spot. Roman Polanski. Yeah. 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 You know what happened? <laughs> Bottle service. Oh, <laughs> and sparklers. Sparklers yes. in, and in, bottle in December. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man. Uh, it's still 93% on the tomato meter, 98% audience score. Who Look, knows? I mean, it it's definitely doesn't, it wouldn't deserve it, but. But it's a beloved, this is a beloved, beloved movie, movie, and uh, everybody just wants it to, to celebrate what they do. Do you think it's going to age well? <sighs> I don't know. Because it's like once, just the, once the, uh, like, the haze of. Yeah. I think it'll age blowing well. Blowing your load is, th- is over. I think it'll age well because if it was simply just a like fan service, like, hey, they appear, they get to kick some ass, and they make a couple jokes, and they leave. But I think the way they wrote it with them three being so integral in Tom's character becoming Spider-Man, like it, it's, it's almost that they made it in a way where that character doesn't develop without the gimmick of adding those two guys. So it, it's what I'm saying is it's not simply just fan service. It's actually served the plot to make the character yeah, well, better. Well, Into the Spider Verse is still aged pretty well. And people look back on it fondly. People still, so. Spider Man really Two is seem it's a little bit uh, dated. Uh, I think uh, still mostly holds up, but Spider Man Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's twenty years old, right? Like, of course, yeah. it's dated. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no way around it. Um, I, but, I think he's more more saying is it going to be dated in terms of like their love for it oh. after like the 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 bl- the or the bliss wears away and we actually just judge it for a movie. Mm. It's it's one of those to me. It's like a it's like Avengers Endgame where it's like it's an event movie. At, at the end of the day, it's 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 kind of in its own category of of how you judge movies. Yeah, at least for me, it's these these event movies are different. They're yeah. not they're built on lots of other movies. Right, it's not just the movie. It's definitely an event movie. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I think it'll be shining for a few years still, and maybe more. A little shine in, in Imran's house. What's the last movie that you thought was great? And then, like, look back on it. Oh, it's not that great. That is a great question. Rug boy, a listener can join the conversation. Let us know uh, if you think this movie will still be beloved. You know, down the line, and is there a movie? Like you said, that you used to thought was great, and now you're like, this movie is shit. You can let us know on our Facebook group. It's called Jock and Nerd Nation. Uh, movie that you didn't watch when you were like six and then watched it later. Because there's plenty of, I can list, I have a whole list of movies like that. Yeah. Where I was, was like under 12 years old and thought they were amazing. But I mean, I think it'd be more interesting, like if you were a little bit older and you right. saw like a classic movie that's maybe like 20 that, years that's old. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like 20, yeah. Based on your age. But let us know in the Facebook group. It is a closed exclusive group just for our listeners. Gotta welcome new group member listener Mac Warren. Ooh, return. It's not well. Is it the return? I don't know if he was here before. It's the coming of the Mac and the return. No. It's the return of the Mac. It's a great song. Who sang great that? Great song. Mac. Uh, oh, fuck. That's. um. Uh, you, will ne- you will never be able to name that guy. Because it's like it, it was like a one hit wonder. Yeah, yeah. Mark Morrison. I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. there he is. It's, Mark I was gonna Morrison. say Mac Morrison. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie with uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, it was the Mac. Sorry, with yeah. Um, the fuck is his name? Why am I blanking? I don't know. Richard I, I Pryor, talk, Max Julian. I just think about you know Mac Daddy and Daddy Mac. Oh, Chris Cross. That's right. That's the right. Make it, make it, make it, make it, Mac. You got to wear your fucking overalls backwards, you fucking punks. Jesus. Anyways, welcome back, Warren, to the group. Okay, let's get to Hawkeye. The geekery. The geekery. The major geekery. Geek boner. Hawkeye, episode six, season finale on Disney Plus. Episode titled, So This Is Christmas? Uh, here's your spoilers. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It is me spoiled. <laughs> This is Chris. That's that John Lennon song. John Lennon, Yoko Ono. That's what it reminded me of. So that's right. To be spoiled? So this is, no, not prepared to be spoiled. Oh. So this is Christmas. The good and the bad. Uh, anyways, final episode, the big finale. Anthony, how does this show end? What happens in this episode? I'll just do the quick synopsis. So we ended the last episode seeing the Kingpin had, is working with Eleanor and... Kate obviously learns this from Yelena somehow. I don't know how Yelena got a camera in there. But <laughs> yes, and was able to record everything. I don't know how Yelena got a camera into the back of an auto body shop that now doubles as Kingpin's office and the top of a skyscraper, but whatever. She was a black widow. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so we've learned now that Kingpin is working with Eleanor and she has hired the black widow to kill Hawkeye. 
in the meantime, Kate finds out, find this, finds us all out that her mom's not is in on all of this. In the meantime, we've got Maya questioning everything because of what Hawkeye told her, and Maya is now wanting to quit along with Eleanor, who wants to quit working with Kingpin because it has gotten too close to her family. And Clint Barton still just wants to get all of this shit taken care of so he can go home, but he's in deep and he needs to help clear out some of this stuff and help Kate clear out her stuff because now he feels like he's responsible to her as well. So the episode is basically everybody has to clean up their shit (laughs) before Christmas. Her mess is his mess. They're partners. Yeah, I know he called her a partner. I was like, oh my God, he called her his partner. They're partners. Uh, so great open right away with Vincent D'Onofrio as fucking Kingpin just settling back into this role in comics accurate costumes. They're even shooting him from below, making him look giant. And fuck, if he doesn't look like the fucking Kingpin right from the comic book. Right, I forgot how good he is. Like, yeah, he's great. He, he's born like with a, he's his eye is fucking twitching. You guys notice that? Like, yeah, I saw that. How does he? he does that was does, CG for a second. No, how does he? Can he do that? How does he do that? He plays a very good. This version of Kingpin he plays is very good at having the underlying anger where he's like barely restraining yeah. himself from just blowing up. And you see him blow up in one stage, and then you see him just lose his shit at the end. And we find out about uh, Kate's father. Turns out old. Kingpin, lots of money. And she's been working him for, for him for like 20 years. Uh, Should we start with that? Should we just start with the Kingpin? Let's start you, with we, the Kingpin, dude, because uh, okay. I was waiting for this Kingpin. I have a lot of thoughts on the Kingpin. Yeah. Uh, it's This is, uh, what, Anthony, is this the same Kingpin as in Netflix? I've, I've, I've looked into that, and it's still kind of unclear, although all indications are that he is playing the same, he's playing him the same way he would play him. Right. He's just stronger seems like a lot stronger. a little bit stronger yeah. a lot stronger and a lot yeah. more durable yeah um so i'll just start by saying i'm glad the kingpin is back i'm glad he's in the mcu i hated how he was used in this episode. really i hated it i i i either don't have the kingpin in the episode or have him from the beginning because yeah for me yeah. it felt like his character although cool to see him back like almost took away from the plot mm-hmm. because now you've got this new guy that we haven't really been building towards um, kind of interjecting in between what the conflict should be, which is in Kate's hero's journey. If she's going to become a hero, the, the thing she's got to do is what she does at the end. Although they like super fly by it is they've got to, she's got to put her mom in jail. Right. It's like supposed to be a very, very hard decision. And she's just like, yep, I'm going to put you in jail. Yeah. It just happened. So yeah. I think the build towards Kingpin either have him in the beginning from right from like the first or second episode yes, or don't have him at all and have the build up be this conflict between Eleanor and her mom. Yeah. Or uh, El- Kate and her mom, Eleanor. Yeah, You get like two reveals for the price of one here. Like right. you get, Oh, my mom's evil and the kingpin's the bad guy. But, yeah, but it, that takes away, from, in my opinion, from Eleanor's mom being evil. Yeah, she yeah. killed Armand. Right. She, she killed Armand. She framed Jack, who is just she a... Has no problem throwing this innocent yeah. guy in jail. And Jack doesn't seem to give a shit. No, no Jack is just care. a goofy guy who's good with a sword, turns out, the whole <laughs> just time. just like, oh, all right, I'm out of jail. I got uh, a sword. So uh, here's what I think happened, because I read a couple of articles in the, in the writing and in the editing. There's some ADR. I read a couple of things that they shot more. They had to reshoot to add more Kingpin in and stuff seemed to be chopped and truncated and things happened really quickly between like Kazi and Maya. And mm-hmm. like, that was weird. Uh, they didn't really give that a time to breathe. She just fucking kills him kind of right. all of a sudden. But I think it was to make room for they're like, we need to put more Kingpin. But uh, your point is absolutely right. The problem was you didn't. You should have slow played him better from the beginning. Parallel storylines. No, not slow played him. Not just slow played. Either have him in it, yeah. or don't have him in it, or save him or, or make post credit scene. More than six episodes. Yeah. Yes. Because he does. He comes out of nowhere and undercuts it's one kind of, of the things rest where of the Marvel things. is so concerned about reveals yeah. and yeah. gimmicks yeah. that it, it starts to now hamper how you introduce yes, things. Absolutely. He, he's he comes into the story too late, and he's such a big element yeah. of like he's got so much 
no pun no pun intended, but weight to him. <laughs> he automatically distracts from everything else, but there's been no build up to it. So you have no there's no like you've wanted to see a kingpin gate bishop conflict. Yeah. And one other thing is they're purely relying on the fact that you've watched Netflix. Yes. So if you haven't watched you have Netflix, no idea what who, who, who is this guy? Exactly. Every every yeah. all his cachet is borrowed from other shows. So now you just have this big fat guy. Yeah. That's act like that has no personnel. Like there's nothing defining him in this show because you've introduced him in the last show. Yet you're also saying this is important. And we're going to build to a Kate Bishop fight, which we haven't been building towards. Like this is the he's supposed they're going to make him like the next big, bad street level, maybe even more. And they just kind of threw I just him didn't in. Like, I didn't like the way he was used. And I didn't like the Kate Bishop that. kicks his ass. I know she goes out of him one on one. She look, first of all, look, this kingpin is so he rips off a car door. He gets shot by an arrow. He gets hit by a car, tossed to a place glass window. He gets exploded by things and he's fine he's punching her in the chest she would have been dead she would have been dead she also fell out of a window and just kind of landed i don't know what the fuck was going on there it's not even that that he like she does all that yeah that's you know that is all crazy but it's more the fact that like i like Haley steinfeld i think she's a good actress but i still consider her somewhat of a a pop singer (laughs) and you have wilson fist played by vincent d'onofrio who's been built up to use a pro wrestling term as like a monster heel. He's like this yeah. giant that like it's very tough to beat. Yeah. So you have a pop star beat him in like the first time she sees well, him. It just doesn't ring it's true. It's because to me. Clint showed her how to flick a quarter. I told you that was going to come in. Handy. Come in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's throwing her around like that's the only that was kind of a cool move because you can if you watch it, you kind of see her grabbing his cuff link as she flips around him and does that thing. And I was like, can I do my my rug boy impression? Yes. If I was writing this show, yeah, because <laughs> I've I've tried to now think like that because Rugboy says that all the time. Yeah. If I was writing this show, I wouldn't have Kingpin at all in it. Okay, I wouldn't have him at all. I would have Eleanor right from the beginning in the first episode. You know, she's up to no good. Yeah, like but like it's revealed right away. Right. So you have this budding conflict where you know that Eleanor is bad, and but she's also. Kate's mom and you're building this relationship where they they're close but Kate doesn't know that Eleanor is a bad guy and then you get that final episode where it's the conflict between them two and then she has to decide you get more like Eleanor Kate interaction where you see like Eleanor's a really good mom to her and she's like protecting her but she's also doing evil things and then that like builds up to the decision where Kate's like I got to put my mom in jail and that's her hero's journey yeah and instead at the end Instead of doing the musical number, which I thought was fine, uh, the, the, the button scene you do then is you reveal that Kingpin was behind all of it. Well, and that's how yes. you build up the next show, which would be Echo. I like that you could like uh, like Eleanor could have been in charge actually of like the tracksuits, like she's the boss. She's right. in charge, yes. and then at the end with the button, you go, oh, and then no, Kingpin was in right. charge. Right, then Maya and finds then you build out. You on to a next show because the yeah. Marvel shows, Marvel shows and movies are all about. Defining who the hero is, introducing the new hero. They did that. But then also building towards the next show, because they always have to keep this train rolling. So I think if you did the kingpin button at the end, you make it so now, okay, now I'm excited for Echo. Whereas if where the way it ends here, Echo's already got her redemption. She shoots Kingpin. So now why do I want to watch an Echo show? Well, if yeah, well, I that was one part of my thing is like, do we really need an Echo show? I personally think the Echo show is secretly a Daredevil show. And they they just mm-hmm. called it Echo to throw people off, but yes, they might have some. Yeah, they probably have stuff planned. I'm so just, the Echo from my armchair quarterback. So no, you're right. Like, was Echo that great of a character that you want to I find out? I I more? can't see that as a show. That's I'm a, sorry, no, like, I, that's a dirt up show. That's that's not an Echo show. I don't see that. I, I'm not interested in the least about that show. So Kingpin is not dead. He will be back. You do see, of course, you know the shot is off screen. You hear a thud. Um, in the comics, Anthony, you know this kind of happened. Yeah, she shoots her. She shoots his eyes she out. Shoots, you'll shoot your eye out. She <laughs> literally shoots his eye out. He fucks off to Europe to heal and comes back. And now he's pissed. And she's with Daredevil. And he goes after them. So they're probably going to do something but like w- that. Wouldn't that be a much more intriguing yes. premise? Yes. Is you have Echo now. You build. You build. You build more of the Echo Kazi dynamic because it seems like they were doing some sort of like. They maybe they were in love with each other yeah. or something. Yeah. The betrayal but now, didn't seem that big as it should have been. But that wasn't that. built up enough. No, no way. No, that wasn't. 
But you, instead, you like, you do the buildup of she's been chasing Ronan this whole time, and then the mastermind behind all of this was Kingpin, and we now we're, the next show is her. Okay, now she's got to go after Kingpin. Whereas here, they were like, they they built it in a way where she's like, Kingpin was her family and all this, but we never really saw that. So like their little conflict at the end, it was almost too rushed. Like she just is like. Boom! Shoots him right. Yeah. Like, but they're like the conflict. The, what's more interesting is the internal turmoil that these characters would go through. And like, if we had seen maybe some build up towards like her and Kingpin's relationship, then maybe we actually feel something when she actually sees Kingpin and she's like, "Fuck, this fucking guy betrayed me, and I want to shoot him, but I also love him." He pinched her cheek when she was a child. That's but, not that's enough. What we saw. <laughs> Uh, no, but well, we got four bad guys in this show, yeah, right? You got the Black a Widow, yeah. you got Echo. Oh, and there's Yelena, yeah. You got like Yelena and the and then the mom. So you got And you, the Kingpin too. And the Kingpin, I sorry. did really I kinda I liked how when Fisk showed his how much he cared for Maya, they do say I love you to each other, but yeah, it kinda comes out of nowhere. I, it's too little too late. I will say my favorite part of Kingpin is the fucking Hawaiian shirt under the white blazer. <laughs> I will tell you why. This is a huge fucking Easter egg. Geek boner. Uh it is a, a exact costume from the Spider Man series family business. It's the cover. He's I have it in my hand. I have a trade of it. And the it was D'Onofrio's idea to wear this he said because he's had this image on as a screensaver for the past couple of years on his computer staring at it. he's like you gotta put me into this fucking hawaiian shirt and i <laughs> recognized it right away i was like oh fuck it's that hawaiian shirt on the fucking family business yeah i didn't know about that that was great so I, I didn't catch it but i thought it was funny that he was wearing a it's hawaiian hilarious shirt. <laughs> no some people were like why the fuck is he wearing a hawaiian shirt uh, okay, let's get to then yelena and clint's uh, resolution which also, it's an emotional resolution. Also, Clint gets stuck in a tree and he can't fucking doesn't know how to get out yeah, of the tree. Yeah, that was... What's going on here? He can, He's an Avenger. He can fight aliens, <laughs> but a tree, he can't figure that one out. Um, <laughs> he gotta get out of the um, tree. It, it, ahead, there's Mike. something wrong about them, her taking, like, what New Yorker would take down the Rockefeller tree? Okay, that is like, yeah. That, to get someone down. That's blasphemous. Like, what a douche. Yeah. Also, people, there would have been skaters there. There's like no co- like, where's all the New Yorkers? It's that, fucking Rockefeller that Center. That action Christmas. sequence Jesus. was fucking dog shit too. Some of it was good, but like that whole thing in the skate rink was terrible. Like it was just seemed like, like it. it seemed like like there were putties from like Power Rangers. This is it kept coming and they of, just kept blowing them up. There was a lot of them. You got a lot of fun trick arrows, like more Stark arrows, Pym arrows, color coded. This one was red. And it made him shrink, and then the owl. No, like away. after that chase scene where they used the arrows, awesome. Yeah, that was great. And they yeah. did cool shit with yeah. it. Like this was like impaled in. This is like a free for all. Whatever, just shoot all of the arrows. Whatever they do. I think I think he's more getting at the the the, the tone of it's really wacky. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of it got wacky. But Anthony, what did you think of this? Actually, we talked about some of the Discord rugs. You brought it up, and I watched the episode again. The way Yelena finally finds out and like forgives. Clint they're fighting he tells her mm-hmm. he tells her what happened he mm-hmm. tells her she sacrificed herself you know how she's like and she doesn't believe him they keep fighting she doesn't believe him and then he does the black widow whistle that we mm-hmm. heard from the movie that two of them shared and that stops her and she goes mm-hmm. how how did you know that and then he goes why did you say that name why it was a Martha was moment say, it was, it was total moment, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit she goes how do you know that he goes she told me everything about you she talked about you a lot and then Yelena's like oh okay well I guess I don't have to kill you bye and that just fucking leaves yeah I mean I, I thought I told I said last week I thought her mission was a little hollow I, I didn't think it rang, rang true that being said I thought their conversation was was fine um the the point of it in like at least in my analysis is like Hawkeye Clint Barton is still getting over um the death of of Natasha throughout the episode and this kind of helps him and then this also kind of helps her because she's never had the conversation with anybody about yeah. it yeah yeah so I, I it it works it, it works in that sense and again I thought the her her thinking that Clint like killed him right killed her make no sense like we. It doesn't make it like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. There, there'd be so many stories about this. Like it, they saved the universe. Like they would have gotten the truth out. Um, Why she would just but, buy the story from Valentine? I will use this as a as a way to say I enjoy Florence Pugh she's great. a lot. Oh my god, she's great. 
I think there's there's already like stuff on YouTube of just like recapping all the funny shit she says uh, in these two, lep- two episodes, and she has she has really funny funny chemistry. I love that Haley part. Steinfeld. Oh, and there's a great fight scene where they're fighting through the. It's a long set. They're fighting through the floor. It's really I love that. And she's I love what Kate's like. Stop making me like you. She goes. Oh, she goes. I can't she, help goes it. she goes. You did the really cool. Oh, you body did the body throw. throw. It's great. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> she's like, stop making me like. I can't help myself. She's sl- I like when she slaps her. Kate slaps oh, yeah. her. She goes, like, oh. what was that? Because well, I don't know. <laughs> and then she like presses all the buttons. She's like, that's so annoying. <laughs> I have an issue with that, though. She slips in the elevator and doesn't trip the fucking light that will make the door. You can't do that. You can't slide in an elevator no, you, as you the don't door slide closes. In. No, you can't do it, that. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that you have to It's a little convenient. Really. I mean, there's a lot of convenient writing. But yeah, Yelena. Every she's great. She was great in every scene she was in, and the, the moment she, was. She's emotional. definitely one a very good actress. Uh, my other favorite line. We brought this up in the Discord when Jack Duquesne is talking to the little Armand. He goes, "Remember when you peed your pants <laughs> in the Hamptons?" I, I do. do. Everybody does. <laughs> the fucking. Look. I like that he's just walking around. I I I still don't think the character's all that great. No, but I, I was amused by the fact that they just allow him to walk in with a sword. <laughs> yes, on his hip. And, yeah, on his hip. Yeah, and they're like, no one's questioning. He, he's just walking around. He with got a sword. to help out. The Larpers got to help well, out. And then he gets to go outside, and, and no him. one is just like, "Holy shit, yeah, this guy's Brandis insane!" Is a, sh- uh, a sword and not get arrested or anything. Yeah. And he gets to go outside and start cutting people it's up, great. and no one's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> What are you? I mean, the, the, yeah, Bilotti said this, but like the, the way they portray New York is so unreal. It's a little, a little bit, a little bit. I took oh, the yeah, like, No way. Those guys in the red, like mow it, being mowed down, and just like run it. Like the police would have been there so quick <laughs> if you if you're having hordes of people like running into Rockefeller. Oh, absolutely, yeah, there's just in a second. nonstop security. They only that. show up because she called them to arrest her mother. Like, where the fuck were you guys? There's fucking gunfire. Also. Clint is, uh, he knows he's a target and he goes to this party and he's standing at the open window like a fucking idiot. You're an Avenger, bro. But you you don't have a little bit more common sense to just stand as a target in the fucking window. Makes sense. Oh, there, that was another thing. I mean, I thought the scene was okay. But once Kazi starts lighting up yeah. that building, there would have been so many police. Yes. <laughs> there would, like, he's, I mean, he's, that's an act of terrorism that's going on right now. And there's like no one's showing up. Uh, it's just like the LARPers are just like, oh, we'll we'll evacuate the building. <laughs> uh, they got new costumes. They look pretty pretty good. I guess it's fine. Purple costumes. I felt like the yeah the costumes were very very lackluster, in my opinion. They were it didn't look that much different than what Kate was already no, wearing. Hers looks similar, and his is from the comic, the David. Fraction you know what they comic, need to do? Matt Fraction. They got a. The 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 formula in these series, unfortunately, is like big reveal, right? Big reveal villain, and everybody hero gets a costume. Gets, yep, hero gets their costume. Hero gets it. Yes, <laughs> it is. That's gonna happen. They on gotta Ms. stop Marvel. doing that. It's they gonna happen stop. on Moon Knight. It's gonna happen on every show. It happened on Falcon. It happened on yes. Wanda, and now it's happened here. Oh my god, they all end up with fucking they costumes. They gotta stop. Oh boy. Uh, put on the costume in the beginning. Yeah, put give me the villain in the beginning. <laughs> give me the costume, and now see what you do. Let's try that, you fuckers. Uh, okay, there's more. Clint does make it home for Christmas. He invites Kate and Pizza Dog, and she finally gives him a name. She's like, it's Lucky. His name's Lucky, just for no reason. It was nice, yeah. Uh, and we find out whose the watch it was, whose watch it is. The fucking watch did belong to Laura Barton. On the back, there's a S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, the number 19. Yes, Agent 19 is S.H.I.E.L.D. Agent Mockingbird. Oh, shit. Did I say that last yeah, week? Yeah, that's it. Further uh, proving that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is totally not canon. It, no, it doesn't exist in any U- Unless the Mockingbird moniker can go oh, from person maybe, to person. But, Similar like yeah. Black Widow. Or oh, that. that's a good point. But hmm. I, the whole, what was the point of this fucking whole watch storyline? It was stupid. It was stupid. They built, they made, they made so much of a big deal of this yeah. big watch. And then, like Kingpin was trying to steal yeah, the watch. Why to learn why? about to get to get Hawkeye to get leverage on Hawkeye? Maybe I don't know. You could put it could be a stretch, but maybe Mockingbird knew shit that she shouldn't. But I thought it was going to be like tech that he could use to fuck shit up or yeah. something. It was dumb. So they burn the Ronin suit. The Ronin suit no longer exists. And then you mentioned the mid credit scene. I gotta tell you that fucking lame. This is this this in the movie we're about to review. Both had the worst fucking mid credit scenes. 
I get it. Look, they filmed the song. It's funny, right? It's so over the top and cheesy. The It's a little bit catchy. I could do this all day and it's kind of funny. And yes, you filmed a whole scene for the show. Just want to show you the scene, but they could have had fun with it. They could have put people in the audience from the show, little nods to something. I, I didn't mind it. My my theater friend loved it, by the way. Um, yeah, well, I didn't mind yeah. it. I just think you, you should have. If the goal of these shows is, again, to at least for this one, the goal of the show was deal with Clint's regret over Natasha, like put him in a better place, yeah. bring in the new Hawkeye. Yeah. But then always all these shows are always designed to make us look forward to the, the next first thing. time. They don't do that. This one did. I mean, it I think they should have just do two. They should have done two post credits. It would look the music. I love musical theater and musical movies and the musical fan of me. I was like, oh, this is great. But the MCU fan of me, I'm like, this is some fucking bullshit. What is this? I don't need to <laughs> see this. Two, I minutes. can watch this on YouTube. What the fuck? We already saw it. We saw most of it and they played the whole thing. Weird. And I was waiting. I was like, well, maybe they'll put like somebody like Daryl K was like, wouldn't it be great if like old man Steve Rogers was sitting in the background watching and going, he wasn't there or something. No, he eh, did that. Yeah. You could have added a little. Okay, do we think the Kingpin was blipped? I read a theory on this. Yeah. I read that he wasn't blipped, and that's how he got back into power. Oh, because he took advantage of the power vacuum. Because he took advantage of it the power vacuum. I mean, there's articles out there going, Kingpin's going to be the bigger bad than Thanos and shit. And I'm like, I find that, I don't know how you're going to do that, but okay. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. This is a, He's grounded street level. He could be the enemy when, you know, Daredevil's coming in. That Echo show, it's Daredevil. Maybe it's the first season of Daredevil on MCU. You have it all yeah, set up kill, for that. Don't king the kid. Don't, <laughs> don't king him. Don't king him. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. <laughs> no, he will be back. I think a lot of people are like, I can't believe they just killed the Kingpin after just, he's not dead. They ain't show you a body. Don't, he's not no. dead. He's not dead. Okay. That would be, that would be, that'd be an even bigger fuck you yeah. to Netflix yeah. if they just decided fuck to bring him for one episode right? and kill him <laughs> like that. <laughs> And, you know, the cameo in No Way Home of Matt Murdock, again, you got to know those shows. But if you don't know those shows, it doesn't really hurt, you know, the movie. It doesn't mean anything. It's there. This one, it was like a big part of it. Like, you had to know mm -hmm. uh, who this guy was from the Netflix shows. Okay, let's end with what would you get? Do we want to rate the show overall or rank it amongst? Yeah, we, I can. You know what's crazy? Marvel has given us four movies this year and four TV shows and one animated show. That is a lot of fucking shit for a post, like in a pandemic year. Like it's kind yeah. of crazy. Anthony, go first. Rate, rate it, rank it. Where are you putting this? So I've been saying this the whole time. They weren't necessarily advertising this as a groundbreaking show. So I'm not like too upset with what I got because at the end of the day, I think it was more of just a like a fun Christmassy show with the intended mission of bringing in the new Hawkeye. So in that sense, it's it's fine. It does it does well. I, I like Haley Steinfeld. I like her. I like her chemistry, especially with Yelena. I liked her little speech to to Hawkeye where she talk, talks about like if you could do it with a stick and string, yeah. like I could not be afraid. Like that, I thought that was actually a really nice moment because it. Hawkeye's been a joke right for the most yeah. part and they kind of turn the joke on its head and like oh this is why he's kind of an inspiration to people yeah. is he's a normal guy yeah. um, that being said I found the tone at times to be a little too light for my taste um, and I did and I definitely there are moments in the finale that I did like but for the most part I was really sour on the way they used Kingpin mm -hmm. and I think six episodes is now after seeing a few of these is a little too short, especially with the amount of villains that they throw in these shows and the amount of threads that they need to tie up. So I think overall these shows could be a little bit tighter paced or uh, written a little more tightly or just made longer, like either make it like eight or nine episodes or eliminate some of the threads that you're, you're throwing into these, these shows. So overall I'd give the show a six out of 10. Okay. And I would rate it amongst the Marvel shows I have it right here. Give me one second. I, I still have WandaVision 1, Loki 2. I'm going to go What If 3. I'm going to go with this being 4, oh. and then Falcon and Winter Soldier is 5. Man, Falcon's still at the bottom. No love. Still reason. at the bottom. Okay, that's interesting. Rugs. Let's see. Um, I think this all hinges on do I like Kate Bishop? Because it really was a Kate Bishop show, it wasn't? Yeah, I mean, like I don't like Hawkeye. Never liked Hawkeye. <laughs> uh, you know, Jeremy Renner. He does what he can, but like even he can't elevate Hawkeye. He sucks. You know, whatever. Um, 
he's Hawkeye's at his best when he's playing off of Scarlett Johansson. And um he needs someone to play off of. Mm-hmm. And I think that Haley Steinfeld had some chemistry. I felt like she was not a real enough person, uh, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. She just seemed like this person that would never exist. Like she's rich and she's into like all this stuff, but like she doesn't seem like a rich snob, but she totally is one. And they never went into that in the show. But so anyway, so the, at the end of the day, this Kate Bishop work and I said, yeah, they're pretty successful with that. It was okay. Like it's acceptable. It's like not as great as it could have been, but you know, it's okay. Um, Bad guys wise, Florence Pugh like really elevated everything. Um, uh, you know, having Vincent D'Onofrio adds a little bit of cachet as well. Um, I feel like Echo was interesting, but then kind of got worse as it went along. It was cool, and then all of a sudden it wasn't cool anymore. Like the coolness factor like faded really quickly with that, mm-hmm. and the tracksuit mafia also was like not cool and. Stop being funny also. So I felt like those, all those things got old. Um, so I think it's the, I think what if, and these are tied for last, okay. I believe for me. I, even though I did like a couple episodes of what if, maybe Falcon with the shoulders last and these two are tied for right above that. If I think about it, cause I didn't really like that show either, but yeah, it was okay. It was fine. It, I mean, for the, for Marvel, like at a scale of one to ten, I probably would put it at like a six as well. Okay, yeah, no, you know, I I enjoyed it for like a lighthearted Christmas show. Like Marvel has, it's just it's their Christmas show. They do adequately do what they need to do, which is set up Kate and give a little more depth to Clint. I thought the chemistry between uh, Haley Steinfeld, Jenna Marie Renner, great, Yelena and Haley Steinfeld, great, and. She's great. She'll be great moving forward in this role. Uh, I I guess I wish the plot had a little more meat in it and not to the, all the things. You could have stripped some things, a little more meat. It was just like, I don't know. It was weird, but it was fun. It was definitely a fun show. I, it had moments. It had yeah. some fun moments. Yeah. yeah. And I think my favorite, it's a mixed bag, yeah. my favorite episode, I still think is five with the opening of, uh, of uh, Yelena coming back, the blipping like that shit, even though. Kingpin, the Kingpin shit was kind of crazy and over the top fun to watch. I thought the fifth episode is probably the strongest. The uh, the finale, was, it was okay. It was okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Like, uh, it didn't really set out to do anything crazy. Yeah. It wasn't like this monumental thing. It was just this little small thing that happened. It stayed in its lane. Yeah. And, but I do think that even in that parameter that they set, they've kind of fumbled the ball in the, within those parameters. So, it's one thing to say we're going to do this like fucking groundbreaking fucking crazy ass show that's going to be fucking be mind blowing. And then th- and like they fucking blow it up like Game of Thrones, right? right? Like you have all these expectations. They're really like going for it. And all of a sudden they just kind of like peter out. This had very, very humble expectations and they still managed to fucking fumble, fumble <laughs> stuff up. But I mean, that car chase scene in the second episode is fantastic. There was highlights and there, there's definitely elements yeah. of like a, a, a pretty solid show. There's yeah. just some things that I, I, I thought could have been done better. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I'll give it a seven out of ten. And my favorite, I'm still I got WandaVision number one, then Loki. Fuck, then. Hmm. I guess I would go what if that Doctor Strange episode is still so good. At what if? Uh, and then I'm gonna, I mine is the same as yours, Anthony. Then I'm going to go Hawkeye. Then I'm going to go Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I think it just it the, what hurts Falcon and Winter Soldier is kind of the COVID uh, restructuring of things while they were mm. writing that show. Sounds like it really fucked things up because they could have had a really tight show if they just made U.S. agent like the bad guy and forgot about those other fuck. Right. Let me ask you guys this specifically, Rugs and Imran, if you want to give your answer. Now that we've done a year, yeah, into this is Marvel all this Studios, year. Jesus, Marvel Studios is experiment now into jumping into TV. You know, we, we've done Agents of Shield, Netflix, but that wasn't actually Kevin Feige. Yeah. So far, after one year, success or failure for Marvel Studios on Disney Plus? I think they're the just TV towing shows. the line. I think they're just yeah. You could say success because they're yeah. they're towing the line. Sure. People are watching it. 
we're talking about it. Uh, I don't automatically dismiss each show. I'm always like, oh, intrigued to like give them give them a spin, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's all good faith, you know. That's all good uh, vibes we're getting from it. It's not like we're getting disappointment vibes or we're getting like, oh, this is gonna you know the shit show. Yeah, we're gonna watch like when, when you know remember when the WB became that yeah oh yeah. like when we were yeah out of we obligation. were like we were like looking at the show going okay this how bad is this gonna suck yeah. like right. it was it's not we're there, not there. It's no. actually, and I think I think you put it right rugs we're just on the other side of the line of success right it's it's uh, hopefully it can grow and get better and we're seeing the shows kind of kind of weave into the movies and back and forth now. Right. Uh, and especially mm. with Doctor Strange and, and Multiverse of Madness, that's going to be interesting as, you know, he mentions Westview in the trailer at the end of the movie uh, and you see her in her new costume. So I also think it's leaving a lot of people. A lot of people are. It's interesting how many people are now starting to lose the thread because they either they didn't watch Black Widow or they didn't watch the TV shows and they're they're learning. They're missing things. Uh, it. I mean, I, you, it is a success. Basically, because everybody was talking about it week after week. The numbers, though, the premiere numbers have been going down every show. So that's that's not a good thing. Well, what happened is that Marvel created its own quagmire, its own its own dead weight. Yeah, it, 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 it does these things. We've talked about them now that they've they have these big surprises at the end that they don't really, you know, whatever they don't. Everybody gets a costume and then it has to. Things have to happen in a certain timeline so they can make certain reveals before a movie comes out or this and that. So it is hampered well, they're kind by of all pigeonholing of these things. themselves in certain ways. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're just kind of like there's too much baggage now. I, I, I agree that with your assessment rugs, I think it they towed the line, which would make it like an, a, a success, not a rousing success. Right. I don't think right. they're like people are. There's probably a, a segment that are super anticipating it these shows, but the, the, for the most part, they haven't like fumbled the ball completely. Like they're they're still on the field. I do, I do, I have seen, I have noticed in these shows, similar to a lot of their movies, that they have in the movies there was always this thing against Marvel where they had a third act problem, right? Like there are a lot of their third acts were super over, underwhelming, right? Um, but it was a little more forgivable if like the first two acts were good. Right. But I've noticed in a lot of these shows that like the, the finale ends in a way and people are like, oh, like I wish I wish it would have ended better. Kind of like the way we just talked about this one. Has I have any of the shows stuck the landing? Well, I feel well, like all the endings have had problems. I liked Loki, but you know, Loki some people was had great. Their problems yeah. with it. Yeah. No, what, I like what I'm Loki. getting at, though, is I think like I think maybe why you're seeing the decreased ratings for the show is. Yeah. When you fumble a show's finale, that's a TV show, and I and I heard this from the Ringer verse, and I agreed with it. It hits a little differently than if you fumble a movie because mm. a movie is like mm. two two three hours, right? Right. But like you can kind of forgive if they fumble the third act of a movie, yeah. but if you fumble the last episode of a TV show, well, like we've spent six weeks talking about yeah. this, or the so last that, season, like Game of Thrones, right? So like <laughs> that's but like, bad. You when you dedicate a, like more of your life to something and oh, it yeah. fumbles the, the finale, I yeah. think it, it leaves a worse taste. Because you have spent more time with these characters. Right. Well, we saw the Mandalorian nail it, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And it spouted everything. And, and um, so we know it's possible. And it's absolutely possible. So, I mean, no one was expecting that kind of uh, an ending there. And that whole season was great because you had Ahsoka Tano, yeah. you had big things going yeah. on, and you had that freaking fight with the robots that you know, and this, and, that, and all of a sudden one, there was yeah, the fucking they blade. They nailed their last episodes, yes. So it was like it was actually like very satisfying yeah. to hit yeah. the ending of that show. Yeah. Um, to the point where I'm bringing it up now, right? You know, it's still good. Yeah. So, um, none of the Marvel shows quite gotten close to that are any of them better than the first season of daredevil on netflix no wow no. wow oh yeah no. see they still got room for growth basically the next mcu show i believe is gonna be miss marvel uh summer 2022 miss hmm. marvel okay. yeah i think that's the next one so look forward to that okay good stuff let's take a quick break here 
and play some promos. Are you and looking forward to that? I am. I know you are. Of course I am. <laughs> I miss Marvel. Come on. Pakistani, American, immigrant, superpowers. Ah, that was me without the powers. <laughs> and with a penis. Okay. Uh, just a little different. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reg- we're going to take yeah. a break <laughs> and come back and figure out, are we in the Matrix? Is the Matrix in us? I don't know. We'll find out after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. That is by far my favorite because it's also character driven and the stakes are high and there's much more of a mystery and intrigue to it. A game like Wolfenstein, which people are saying are one of the most socially important video games of the past 10 years. Catch our shows on radio worldwide seven days a week or at any time on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or on over 30 more podcast outlets. Hey, Hooligans, this is Michael. This is Michelle. This is Jeremy. From Who the What Now? The show about... Strange stories from the internet. And Bigfoot came over and beat his ass. Oh, my God. He, like, knocked him around a little bit, and he just kind of went limp, and Bigfoot left. Pop culture. Jean, Jean Fod. Van Clam. <laughs> Jean Fod Van Clam gonna... was supposed to be the alien in Predator. Mm-hmm. And, like, did, like, a jump splits, and, like, ended up with his, like, bat right in the dude's face. <laughs> that, that's his like, move. get the part? In our crazy lives. I'm like, oh, there's a cat on my back. And then, all of a sudden, I feel something. I feel a furry paw go down my ass crack. <laughs> Just slide right down my ass crack. I was like, what are you doing? You can catch us on all your favorite podcast applications. Spotify. iTunes. Libsyn. iHeartRadio. Stitcher. Your mamas. <laughs> and wherever else you find. You, you, they have quality podcasts. <laughs> so don't mess out on the next Who the What Now? And nerd. Listener, if you enjoy the show, join our fan club. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and Nerd! Link in the show notes where you can sign up and, and uh, support us monthly or annually, and you get access, you get swag, you get things, you get access to an RSS feed. You get access to an exclusive podcast feed that has bonus content. The shows come out a little bit early. But we put out instant reactions and post shows and bullshit, we say, uh, when we go take a break. Uh, sometimes take a piss break. Some of that shit is funny. It goes up there. People enjoy it. Uh, you also get Discord benefits because we do a monthly hangout on Discord just for our Patreon supporters. Uh, and we just had one last week. It was our holiday Discord hangout. It was a lot of fun. Rugs was there. Rugs, thanks for showing up. Yeah. It was a good time. I drank some beers. I had some beer. Some oh, other that some, means you didn't shut up. Some other people had some beers also. I'm not gonna name. Oh yeah, names. some people were drinking. Uh, a lot of people were drinking, but <laughs> heavily. But the yeah. first time everybody was on camera, like everybody's cam was on, so that was kind of fun. Oh to, wow, yeah, to hang out. Uh, the next one, January 2022. It's weird to say it'll be January 20, Thursday, January 20th, 2022, 8 p.m. Central. Sign up $5 a month or more gets you those discord benefits. Jockinner.com slash Patreon for all that stuff. Okay. We got a, We still got a movie review. A movie came out, uh, a big comeback of a sci-fi uh, franchise. I'm talking about matrix resurrections. Here's your spoilers. Strap yourselves in. You fucks. Spoiler time. This movie, uh, which is the direct sequel to the third matrix movie, which was, Reloaded or revolutions or rejuvenated revolutions, or I believe. Revolutions, reno- renovations, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, the, uh this on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's currently holding a sixty-five percent tomato meter, six point three out of ten average rating. Verified audience rating also about the same, sixty-three percent. This movie's budget was a hundred and ninety million dollars. Now it came out. Uh, day and date on the theaters and on HBO Max. This is the last movie that Warner Brothers is releasing simultaneously on HBO Max and in the theaters. And it happened to come out like five days after Spider-Man came out, which meant nobody was going to the theaters to watch this fucking movie. And the movie actually opened on a Wednesday. So it's five day domestic opening box office only twenty two and a half million dollars currently worldwide. It's sitting at about sixty six million dollars. Lame. Yikes. 
Basically, it made like thirty dollars. Like it didn't make a lot of money. Uh, I better hope a lot of people were on HBO Max. Yeah, it. I wonder if it got them subscribers. I don't know. This movie, written and directed by one of the Wachowskis, Lana Wachowski, directed. Uh, writing is Lana with David Mitchell and Alexander Hemmen, and of course, returning Hyman. Hyman? <laughs> mm. Returning uh to to the franchise, Keanu Reeves as Neo, Carrie Ann Moss as trinity slash tiffany uh filling in for Lawrence fishburne you got yaya abdul mateen the second as morpheus filling in for hugo weaving you got jonathan groff as this version's agent smith and then you got newcomers jessica henwick with the blue hair as bugs uh neil patrick harris as the analyst jada pinkett smith coming back playing an older old niobe priyanka chopra jonas she's married to a jonas brother uh, playing Sati, the grown-up girl from the third movie. And did you know Christina Ricci was in this movie? Yeah. I, who was she? I you tell. I can't. She was in the meeting. She was in the, the which meeting? Yeah, the meeting. meeting about making the new Matrix. Oh, game. she was one of the staffers at the. Th- I didn't even recognize fucking Christina Ricci. She, I mean, I love Christina Ricci. She hasn't done mm. shit in a while. Uh, and you got Lambert Wilson as the Merovingian. and a couple other people we'll get to later. Uh, Anthony, here's the real question. You, I know you have seen the first Matrix. I have. It's a great movie. Did you watch two or three? No. And then you watched this one, which is four. I did. I did a recap. I, I, I watched a couple of recaps, though, of two and three just okay. to like, try okay. to prime myself as much as I can. Okay. You know what? It's funny. Turns out you probably didn't need to do that because the movie shows you everything you need to see. But before we get to that... <laughs> I don't think you need to see those movies. Well, no, I think I, I think I would have been really confused to be honest. Okay. If I didn't see t- if I didn't uh, recap. Uh, okay, okay. Well, now what happens in Matrix Resurrections? Matrix Resurrections. So, based off the recaps I've read, we ended the Matrix series with peace between the machines and the humans, where the humans basically get to live free in this little part of Zion, or they get to live free. The machines get to reboot the matrix and any part, any person that wants to be free can be free. Right. Yeah. That's and, basically where we're at. And Neo and Trinity are dead. Neo and Trinity are dead. The, the Neo sacrificed himself for all this because in the previous matrices, everyone that was a Neo decided to just reboot the matrix, but he decided to save Trinity. Yeah, there were like right? seven matrixes. So yes, it was a never ending thing of yeah. the one. And, but he decided to be the real one and except for give freedom. The one right, and only. So, we're in we open up and we're seemingly back in the matrix and it's really confusing why we're back in the matrix <laughs> if there was this piece and we find that neo is a programmer within the Na- matrix and he had created a video game based on the matrix in his life that is in this world he's living in the so matrix everything yeah. he's done is now been boiled to a video game and he's still having like l- issues with where he's at like he's not completely accepting of the reality he's in uh, but someone something's controlling him and we have a group of humans that are trying to find neo and the way they are able to kind of get a triangulation on neo is neo creates a a modal within his game that inadvertently recreates a or Maybe subconsciously, he creates a a new Morpheus combined with a Agent Smith, and that's like a program within a program, right? Correct. Is that and, yeah. and and this is the basically the key to the humans finding Neo and freeing his mind and uh, figuring out what the hell's going on with this new Matrix. So that'd be my synopsis. Okay. Okay. Uh, does I that sound like I've watched? <laughs> feels like I, I, I. Does that sound close enough to what I, like that I've at least yeah. watched the movies, even though yeah. I haven't watched all the movies? Yeah, no, you got to. I think you get it. Yeah, you right, needed yeah, to just know where it ended I, up. I also to see where watched it the up. movie, The Matrix Resurrections. Like, I've probably finished it four or five hours ago. Oh, okay. It's long. Ooh. Also, it's two and a half hours long. Um, Rugs, let's start with you. I I watched this movie a second time. Whoa! Uh, because I'm still so on the fence about this movie. I'm what part of me is like, I what the fuck did I just watch? The other part of me is like. Well, there's a lot of good things and interesting things, but just something isn't connecting. I don't know. I'm very confused. And on second watch, you do pick up some more things that add a little depth. But, Ruggs, what did you think when the movie was over? 
I feel like this is the most unnecessary film we don't need. Okay, it. I'll give it you that. It felt unnecessary. It doesn't add anything. It um like the things that it brings up like here's the thing. Okay. First movie, right? Is great. All time. I don't know why. All time and I'll, I'll tell you yes. I'll tell you why it's great. Because Neo is the one. All right. He's the Messiah. This person that can do things in this space that no one could ever even predict. Even the machines couldn't couldn't predict. And at the end of that movie, it's so hopeful. He says, We're going to now show these machines a world with people who have free will. They're gonna remake it. We're going to fucking fuck shit up. And then the fact that they made a sequel to that movie completely shit on that. And then they tried and they even made it even more shitty by saying that it happens over and over again. And then they kind of try and reconcile it with, okay, well now this, every other one that's happened did the same thing, but this one is going to do something this different. Time. Then you get to the third movie and the third movie it's like, okay, you find out that uh, basically um, Neo needs to reinsert himself into the Matrix. He like he has to. He has to in order to keep the Matrix going because if he doesn't, then all the people that are in the Matrix are going to die. He's going to be responsible for everybody's death. So he has to make this choice to reinsert himself. But he also saves Trinity um, and whatever. And it allows him to go through this kind of adventure and meet all these other people. And he's able to recreate the matrix as he sees fit. Right. Right. And brings about peace in that he dissipates himself into the matrix and he disappears. So each success, each next version of the matrix is weaker than that original idea of, okay, we have to now we have now introduced free will and, to the human beings and we're going to not only that, but show them that anything is possible. If I can do this, everyone can do this. Everyone can fight the matrix. They can all fly like me. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this film, there is no spoon. So this film <laughs> at this point in time, now the machines have, they've, they've achieved peace. They've created a matrix where people can choose to be in it or not to be in it. But, one of the things that happened in that third movie that was kind of a game changer that they really didn't do much with was Smith was able to leave the machine and become human. Oh, right. That's right. He was. He wants, he wants to destroy everything. That's right. He, be, he was a but person. But the fact that these. Per, now, I thought if I was one of the Wachowskis and, you know, I'm not, but like. You know, if I was, I would be, that's where I would start. Because now the machines. These programs become human. They have the curiosity of not only can they become human, uh, but they could also be willing participants in the matrix. Oh yeah. Or they could be willing participants in the world. And that would be interesting. That, 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 that a whole other, like, so the matrix would be irrelevant at that point. And they would be a whole other thing about sentient life and life if life can can generate but no they decided to kind of just redo the same thing that they've done before yeah. which didn't need to be they needed to progress further because you have these machines that have this problem now this messiah has come this messiah has has now created a new version of the matrix um changed the whole paradigm of what the 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 idea that these things are enslaved these humans are enslaved and that the, the that the machines have all the power when they're actually it's a symbiotic relationship and it's a binary relationship right. it's organic and techno it's things so to make this movie really doesn't add anything it doesn't progress anything it doesn't really do much and it's kind of like a wet fart. <laughs> um, and even being creative. So at the end of the day, all it has is a social commentary. And that's the only good part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like the action's not good. Yeah. 
Um, they didn't do anything that was like, like, what is the, okay, so let's talk about the social commentary. The social commentary is very simple. Is that, um, Lana Wachowski wants to talk about the constructs that we're in. And there's a few of them that they touch upon, right? There's this, this construct that's happened with social media. Yeah. Where we're being, and there's this other, and that construct you can extrapolate to anything, right? And this whole idea of the matrix being like a trans allegory. Yeah. I mean, all it is because, you know, all it is is about trying to get out of a construct. Right. You're religious, your religious construct, your, your sexual construct, your whatever, your, your, your class construct. Like all of these are constructs that, society has made and you have to somehow get out of those constructs that's been done to death in the other movies well they There's also not real the, on that on that construct they also like they basically are kind of doing like the free will versus determined like um free will versus like being like on a, on a path and they're he, he was she was trying to like from what i gathered with basically saying like since we're always on we're like the world, the matrix is so immersed in us or, or from similarly like technology, like even like the choices we make with being on social media, like, are we really choosing those? Right. Or is it like the algorithm is put it in front of us and they're making us choose that sort of thing. Yeah. But continue. I'm just building on what that, that, that one comment. No, but it's maybe. true. Like, so there, there are all these constructs and we don't know where one ends and one begins. Right. Uh-huh. And, I think at the end of this, it's like the idea that there is a one is that you, there is no such thing as the one. There's a two. There is only the, the binary. Mm. I mean, the binary is it becomes one, right? Like good and evil. You need both. Yeah. They they don't exist without each Neo other. You needed Smith. Dark and yeah. light. They don't exist without each other. Trinity. They there's, you know, whatever. So, the, but then the idea is to, to go beyond that, that there's two and that the two are actually one. And there's no need for a binary anymore. Um, and that's kind of like a construct breaking idea, right? So, okay. Does, does that a movie make, <laughs> you know, does that, does that make a great film that we've now, now, all they did, all, all you just moved the goalpost a little bit more. Yeah, is that like? Am I like astonished about this? Like this is we know about. We know about these constructs. We that was the first matrix. What is real? We don't even like. We're in a world right now where there's no such thing as truth. It's all subjective. It's all how you feel, right? It's all like what you and you had neil patrick harris say yeah, these that's things right, in that exposition dump but he does explain fear and and desire you know in the we, human mind we talk about yeah all of these constructs that exist um yeah so but does that make a great movie does the story grab you does the, the did did you feel that exhilaration of discovery you don't there's none of that there's nothing to discover here i i i'm gonna build on that i i agree like so overall i generally agree with you that like the movie the foundation of the movie is really built around the, the commentary they're trying to make yes and i agree that first that one that one you were you're referring to it's it's a fun conversation but i don't feel like the movie by the end has any sort of answer to it like right. they're not yep. they're not they just kind of throw the idea out there and then there's the other idea that they hit you over the head with right away which is like this corporate like movie making in general right. so i feel like lana wachowski is definitely trying to like poke fun at the industry where it's like all we want to see are reboots and sequels yeah, and big yeah, block like there's yeah. no you even have the Carbidian? What is it? The, the Merovingian. Merovingian. The guys yelling about like no originality, yeah. no paper, no books. He's yeah. Like, you know, it's it's they're hitting you over the head with like yeah. this movie like is made because the the Almighty Warner Brothers wanted another Matrix and like it's, Lana Wachowski's not like she hasn't ever like gotten out of the shadow of the Matrix. But then like so you make that commentary. You basically do like scream like that's what oh, Wes Craven yeah. was doing in, doing in Scream right where he, like he commented on the 
the genre while the movie was going and on. And the new nightmare too. Right. The new nightmare does it. And like those work. Yeah, the execution is me, better on those. Yes. For this movie, like yeah, I like yes, there that is a very obvious thing, right? But like so you're commenting that this movie and correct me if I'm not following it right, but you're commenting that this movie is basically unnecessary. Yeah. Yet you're asking me to invest in the movie. Why? While you're digging well, on the while movie. You're, while you're digging the on the movie you're making. I mean, she literally, they name drop Warner Brothers. Like, the company works for Warner you, Brothers. You I was like, then, okay, what? But then there, by, by the end, there's no, like, so what? Like, again, they, they bring up this idea that they hit you over the head with. But then, like, what? So what is the point you're trying to get across? You do this, like, stupid thing at the end with the cat. Oh, my cat God. Tricks, and it's just like fucking worst post credit so, well, scene. Now you're like. This movie was you made me watch this movie that you didn't want to make and you're saying it's pointless. We're we're back at square one too. We're like we're back at the ending of the first Matrix where you beat the Matrix, yeah, they just, you beat the they fucking just guy. Flipped it and made the And then Trinity. we just went through the we we just went through that whole thing and it, and nothing was gained and no, nothing nothing new happened. They were just they kept on going back to the same old So the machines are just as chained to this kind of construct as the humans right. are. Why would they keep doing the same thing over and over again? Right. So, uh, what I heard also, it's a commentary on the fact that I, the only reason they came back and did this is Warner Brothers, I think, told them we're going to make this movie with or without you. We want to make another Matrix It probably would have been better. Maybe. Maybe. There's, yeah. there's, just a, there's just a sense of disdain in the movie for the own movie that I... I, I Rubbed yeah, me the wrong yeah, way. It is. It is. It is weird. But I mean, I enjoyed the first half of the movie and the kind of trippy atmosphere and the the meta. Yeah. Too. It was almost too meta. But the commentary on like, yeah, like you said, like what people well, the, expect the, from the a mystery, maker. right? Like that. I I enjoyed. I enjoyed that to a point where it's like, okay, he's back in the Matrix. How is he back in the Matrix? And then you find out, and it's like, oh, this is kind of like flipped on its head. Like basically, Neo and Trinity are batteries, right, for the new Matrix, and um. He, Morpheus isn't really Morpheus. It's a different Morpheus. And Agent Smith wants to come back because he hates this version of the Matrix. So there's like some interesting stuff, but I agree. Like, there's nothing really. I haven't seen this it's number two and three, but there's nothing that makes me feel like I'm watching a revolutionary movie like I did the first Matrix. Yeah, and you know, you can't really do that without, a, a, and just in terms of like people being in the Matrix, like we all want to be in the Matrix. Facebook's fucking metaverse. People are fucking jizzing over digital products that they're going to make thousands of and living in. Everybody wants to get into the Matrix now. I, I think it. I, I think that what happens is, is that the Wachowskis or whoever um, are so kind of they don't they they don't want to look at this as uh, an opportunity to write something interesting. They looked at it as an opportunity to like whatever to just kind of like make the studio happy. And I wanted them to go and okay, so at the end of the Matrix Revolutions, Neo restarts the matrix and sati makes a sunrise for sati and everybody in the oracle and there's a piece that's been there that has been established we don't know for how long but there is a piece and they had peace for a while yes and the matrix is going to be made in the way in in the way that uh best fits humanity it would be great to see that that failed (laughs) that 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 there is no solution because humans cannot be like, you know, humans will always be their own worst enemy yeah. and that machines trying to use humans as their their as their source of energy is, is stupid. And there, there it would be interesting if they f- figured out some, you know, something that they could go and go. That was a complete disaster. And ne- maybe Neo's way they had to maybe they, they had to recreate Neo to try and understand what happened like you know just something like that but that's not what went down i mean i kind of like the idea that some of the machines broke off and work with the humans like there was it was cool that was kind of a neat concept some of the concepts are like made me think but then I if the know. machines could wear people like smith did can just upload themselves into people and wipe them out yeah, they, don't you think they would all do it well the, but in this they had morpheus was a program and he couldn't even get in to io like he had to show up as like this thing 
Yeah, he's a right. Like, I, I had a, I had a thing that crossed my mind too. I was like, that didn't make a ton of sense. I was going. So you brought back, maybe it just wasn't clear to me in the movie. You brought back Neo and Trinity to be batteries for the new Matrix, right? Like they're the batteries, right? But if the machines are so smart. Why would you bring back the two people that can really take all of this down I thought to that be your too. batteries? And not only that, why would you make him play this game that is his memories that if he remembers well, how he did it and then put them close to each other? Well, the, the game thing I didn't mind because there is like this thing to, okay, if we're going to make everyone believe the new Matrix, then we're just going to acknowledge the truth and make it into a video game so that anyone that even questions this will go, no, you learned that from a video game. Like that kind of makes oh, sense to me. Oh, uh, okay. Like, you just make some. You turn the you turn the truth into fiction, so that anyone that questions the the truth is automatically labeled as fiction. Similar to how like our society is right now, like that kind yeah. of rings true. Okay, to me. yeah, yeah. I just was more like, why would you fucking make the guys the batteries that can take this all yes. fucking down <laughs> and keep them like so they meet well, in a coffee thing, shop every day? The other Matrix yeah. <laughs> movie, they they went up in the ship and they broke through the clouds and they could see the sun. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So we know that there is solar energy for them to take. If they really, they, um, is it really smart to like bank your whole entire existence on humans? No, they're flawed and they're dumb. When they, when they can, yeah, go up and through the clouds and get solar energy and pipe it down, like they could easily do that. You mm. bank it on the two people that brought down the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And I mean, I don't know. That didn't make that. I, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, it's a, a lot of some See, of the be, setup it, didn't make sense. It would be to me. I think this is what happened. This what should have happened is that Neo reinserts himself into the Matrix. Um, and also they have this truce, the machines stop using the humans as batteries and they go out into, they use all their energy to go out into space and, and pipe that energy down. But the humans need the matrix because the, there's not a, a, it, for a population of people there's that, to that live. there's not, there's only very limited resources yeah. mm. and they need the matrix and they can't do it on their own, basically. Yeah. Right? And then you can start talking about like, you know, someone actually using the matrix and, and, and to actually taking over the matrix and the humans actually need to save the matrix to stay inside of it so they could live. So it would be cool for that, you know, in that way, because there's no reason for them to go through the whole rigmarole of Neo having to figure out that he's Neo again and this. It, it's all that don't yeah, I mean, it's, it's all nostalgia you got, bait. You got to free Neo again, and then I, uh, you know, she, you know, she's playing with subverting expectations a little bit, and I thought it was interesting where it, Trinity had to choose to come out, but it's just funny that they called her Tiffany, and like, and they didn't even change his name. It's still Thomas Anderson. Of course, the fucking people are gonna find him. You're not even trying to hide him very hard. Uh, it took him sixty years, I guess. Maybe they were. Maybe it were. Right. Well they, well, they wouldn't have found him if he didn't subconsciously create Build the modal. The, the modal, which had but the that, that, movie. That's in the it. exact flaw. Yeah. Like, it's so the, the machines are dumb then because they, yeah. they they had to have anticipated that some part of his suppressed memory would try to get out. Yeah. No matter how many blue pills you're gonna eat, it's so why, still. In. Yeah. What? Why was? Where were they? The batteries? I just don't understand why they were the batteries. I thought all the people were batteries because at the end of the Matrix, like Love. he let out all of the. It was he let out all of this energy to like rebuild the matrix in one shot mm. and it's the bond between the two of them ultimately this is still a love story but, are, but aren't they dead like didn't they brought them back I to gathered, life they, they were brought dead. them back to life yeah. to make the new matrix yes i didn't like how they brought them back to life either it would be cooler just like i don't know how Smith, they know how to do that but if they, they could just 3d print people oh like they just great. 3d print yeah. somebody hmm. you did know you, did you guys like that smith did you like smith at all did you like smith's role in this I think he was he, he was pointless. Yeah, because he was ultimately he was just there to say lines that other people that Hugo Weaving said. You I know, like Jonathan Groff. For. I don't think he's as menacing as Hugo Weaving. I did like at the end when he comes in for the save. Like I didn't expect that. That was kind of good. Well, they're purged Matrix programs, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so they want the they want the old Matrix back, right? The old code. There was so some of the things I liked. I actually really enjoyed seeing Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss back in these roles. I thought they were great. They kind of just slide it back in. It's great to see him as Neo. Jessica Henwick uh, was was pretty good. Yaya Abdul Mateen, pretty good. I like Jessica Henwick's character. I'm just keep thinking of other movies that I would write. I'm like, 
imagine that the humans needed the matrix, right? And they needed it at, as a place to survive. And, but in the matrix, they all understand that they're in like a, an augmented reality. So they can do they, superhero shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. So there's like towns where like you have, it's fucking just like everything has like a, like anything goes. The problem like is can everybody would be a god. How do you fucking manage but that? No, but shit? then there'd be, there'd be no, there'd be like some Amish people. Like there'd be like a <laughs> section that would like we don't use power. Like yeah, yeah, it would be Amish. Yeah. They would just like not want orthodox any of that shit. Matrix users. Yeah, the, the, the orthodox. That'd be interesting. See, that's not none of that's there. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have those conversations. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know? throwing on my casual fan hat yeah. because I only saw the first one, not the last two. But if I was uh, coming in with that perspective, not wanting to analyze it, if I if I look at it from that perspective, I go to my I I said to myself at the end of the movie, I go, nothing, like and maybe Lana Wachowski would be like, that's exactly the point. Like yeah. some sequels are supposed to like wow. I was I was I would say nothing wowed me. Yeah, and and maybe again she would say, oh yeah, it's not supposed to wow you. That's why I hated making this reboot, whatever. Um, but like there was nothing. Like seeing that bullet time for the first time was like amazing, yeah, right? Yeah. And like seeing some of those fight scenes, and he's like, "I know kung fu," yeah. and he like all that stuff. But they kind of retreaded all of that and didn't make any of it more interesting. Like the only things that I found somewhat interesting were when they made all the people just dive bombers. Swarm, I thought that was okay, kind of cool. Yes, the but, swarm bots were crazy, and that was a disturbing fucking scene. But but I didn't see like, I guess I guess like seeing Trinity fly is like cool, but like there's no. There wasn't like the next evolution in the one and Trinity doing anything that like was mind bending in the Matrix anymore. Like they, I feel like they ran out of stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of this is intentional on Lana Wachowski's part. Yes, uh, and I well, think she hated making her own movie, and I think she purposely made like a divisive movie because it <laughs> turns out this like if you read a lot of reviews, it's a movie that people either love or hate. It's kind of crazy, uh, but I'll give it. I'll give it this credit. It wasn't a popcorn flick. <laughs> no, no, it, it wasn't. Was, which, which, like normally, like these are supposed, like these are big budget movies. They're yeah. supposed to be like popcorn flick. This one, they didn't. They definitely weren't trying to make you sit there and like just be entertained. It's a commentary by what you were on, on popcorn I, flicks, almost. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a bad film. I just don't think it's. I don't think it, it's what people were looking for. Yeah, but the, who, so it's who dictates art? The fucking the viewer or the artist? I think this is another thing she is saying with this movie. Well, that's great then. If that's what uh, the choice of the artist is, then that's fine. This is the, this is her property. Yeah. She can do what she wants with it, and I respect that. You know, uh, immensely. I think that that's at the end of the day, the person who owns the the IP, the person who thought of it whatever they want to do with the character is what they want to do with the character um but regardless of the fans but that doesn't mean that the fans have to like it. it's kind of the opposite of what they did with no way home if you think about it like thematically like they didn't give us any of the shit you know the fans wanted really well i think at a certain point when you come up with something and it takes on a life within fandom yeah um, you either on the same wavelength as the fans or you're not at a certain point in time, the fans might be either you've outgrown the fans or the fans have outgrown you and they want something different or they don't even know what they want. And you're, or maybe your best years are behind you. I mean, I also think it's a commentary you know? on how the the movie, the matrix has changed over the last 20 years in people's minds, how red pilling went through a whole thing and mean something else. And, like it's almost like that. None of that is relevant anymore or topical. Well, I don't know. I think. I think in that sense, she is trying to say like everyone's boiled down the Matrix over the past twenty years. Like people's only memory of the Matrix is like bullet time right. and like these cool action scenes. And she's like, no, I actually had something to say, yeah. and I'm going to try to say something else in this movie. And maybe I'm going to subvert your expectations with the amount of action you're expecting, and instead comment on all these things. I just felt like. The topics she brought up, she didn't really have any defining answers to it. She just kind of brought them up. And they also they yeah, say just, bullet time also in the movie, which I was like, this is some of this is taking me right out of this. Like it's weird. I, yeah, where do you end on this philosophical journey? Right mm -hmm. where where does it where does it end? I mean, you have a speech given to you by Neil Patrick Harris about how human beings are 
you know, they want to be programmed. They want to be led. They want to be controlled. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's true in a lot of ways. And that there's a yearning to kind of break the construct. And I think that one day that'll be possible um, with science. All right. You can, the human experience is going to be completely different. And it, and all of the, our, our thoughts about humanity will be irrelevant. But so those things are, are, are happening. The, the, we're, we're on the way to that, right? So we're going to be beyond human. We're going to be transhuman. We're going to be, you know, making people in test tubes. We're going to be um, taking away qualities of people. We're, we're going to and stop probably having sex, you know, we're probably just going to just make people in the lab and they're going to be not quite human. They might even have technology in them. And, and all of this will be the way what we consider humanity to operate will completely be irrelevant. Like demolition in the man. future. <laughs> well, beyond <laughs> demolition, like demolition I'm talking man. about like, how do you use remember, the seashells? <laughs> remember in, uh, was it an AI? Was it an AI? Where like the aliens come back and visit the fucking. Oh yes, kid. at the very end, they because uh, he the kid gets frozen. And yeah, then they so find he wakes him later. up. Yes, thousands of years and later. And it's just like the and it's just like these like bio organic yeah, things. Yeah, these. Shapes. That's gonna be us. Yeah. We're not gonna be human, the way that we think. We're not gonna be animals. These binary animal animals or whatever. We're gonna be these things that could probably just like, like 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 the alien symbiote just split off and just become another. Here's my kid, you know, whatever. <laughs> And that's it. Was there you know? was there anything you got any action scenes you like? There was the warehouse scene. No, I didn't like anything. Really. I was like bored. Be, uh, the, after that first act where they were meta, yeah. that made me laugh and I thought it was interesting yeah. and funny. Yeah. After that I completely was just like, oh, I don't care I, about anything yeah, else. I like happening. the beginning of it. And what's interesting is they they got a lot still a lot of shooting, a lot of people in fetish outfits, a lot of killing and shooting. Except if you notice, Neo never picks up a gun. Never fires a gun. No. He's the fucking Jedi force push guy in this movie. And I think that's just the reaction to like uh, Columbine coming out after 1999. Those kids dressing like Neo. Yeah, we don't want to glorify guns. Yeah. So, I mean, I appreciated that a little bit, but he's just doing a lot of force pushing. He barely just remembered Kung Fu. I, I, I didn't he like any of the fly. action either. No. Uh, I mean, I, I thought it was fine, but yeah. I'm watching The Matrix. Right. Yeah. When Carrie Ann Moss flies, it's the worst wire work I've ever <laughs> just seen. Just hanging there and all of them. <laughs> like, oh. It looked really fucking bad. And she could fly. It looked, he can. It, it looked cringy bad. It, bro, it yeah. reminded me of the scenes from like Superman 2, those flying scenes. Like that looked like oh, geez, Zod that. and them fucking fly <laughs> hanging up there. The girl. I, I, I would have thought if I uh, that maybe they, they could have sparked up the action by having people in bullet time, but then people fighting around the bullet time. Mm -hmm. Like if you could like access the non bullet time, so you had like people standing still with right. bullets flying, but then like you had people fighting and they had to like dodge the bullets while they're fighting, like the slow motion bullets. They had to like be mindful of those. They almost I, did something. I, I like just that. think in a post Doctor Strange world or a post what's that other fucking movie where the land folds Inception. in Inception. Yeah. Yeah. Inception. Like if you were able to be Neo, you would be doing some badass shit. Like that was like on that level. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about like fucking move through time. The foundation yeah. of this whole entire construct is is like now buckling, and at your whim, you know they don't have they didn't have the vision to do that. They did one cool technical thing in those scenes where the analyst shows up, where he's kind mm -hmm. of frozen time. He is in a different frame rate, walking around like he's all jittery than them, and they are shot in a different frame rate. And he's all like, you know, I'm moving faster than you can blink. Like, that was a cool effect, but that was, you know, what, you know really. what else? And maybe I'm just boiling this down. But it's tough when you cast Doogie Hauser as the main villain. <laughs> yeah, I did not buy him as the bad guy. I'll tell you that fucking much. <laughs> oh, okay. absolutely. I was like, come on. It's fucking I, Neil know, Patrick I, Harris. I, I just, it's like, it's Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Like, he's, his name is too synonymous with so much goofy shit if he's not singing and dancing i don't want to see him fucking be a bad you met ted yes that's all yeah. <laughs> no i that was that's why i was like i couldn't that guy, yeah i couldn't buy him as like the ultimate wait bag. for it <laughs> legendary uh so at the end now they're uh she can fly in their gods and they're gonna redo the matrix well they yeah so at the end uh, they, in their they're, own way now since they're i guess they're the ba the batteries they can 
they're the creators of the matrix so they can do whatever they want um but and there's yeah, still I mean, a I piece guess, with the machines or something i was unclear I some machines right well there was a machine civil war oh right right so some machines the are resources yeah yeah some machines are cool but yeah. then some are not like sabebe and kaju maju or whatever that other one was. oh i didn't like did you like those like uh weird machines they, I, some of them are a little too cute they were i yeah i mean i like the idea that they're helping them and they needed their help i like, like the i like like the nanite dudes yeah I think those are cool yeah the way morpheus got in and out of the fucking up the umbilicus umbilical cord or whatever I, I was i was laughing at that scene just because they were like man this is going to be such a hard mission and it was like, barely sh- an and, inconvenience and they, at all and they, barely. And they just barely that's a screen rant thing. That's a, yes. they, they, they 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 montage the whole thing yeah. it's like oh this was they are, this it, was easy oh it's already done as i'm well, explaining that whole heist was just over convoluted yeah. like yeah we gotta jack her in to get her out why, and then why did they have to jack in bugs. bugs because you needed they need like a stable transfer mind in between because you can't Take it out and put the other thing in. But then I, when they took out Trinity, yeah, when they unjacked her initially from the pod and they put in bugs, how was Trinity still in the matrix? Oh, she was in her. Oh, that's a good point. They, she was. They no, were like in the same. Jessica space. Henwick was was. She was pretending to be Trinity, so oh. th- nobody would know until they could rejack in Trinity. Yes, uh, it looked so they like Trinity, get... but then it flickered a little bit. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah it was flickering. Yeah. I, ca- I, that I was, was just like a little cool. unclear. Like they were coming apart and coming back together, and their minds were freaking out. And did you know that Chad Stileski played her? That husband? was her husband, and she's like, "Please stop, My husband Chad. Chad. Stop fucking calling me Tiffany. He really is a Chad. He's such he a really Chad. is. He, he's uh, makes you know what better I thought movies. was going to happen. I thought when she started fighting her husband, when she's like, the stop, kids will caught. come. I thought she was going to start fighting the kid. That would have been like, great. That, I was like, yeah, they should have her fucking kick that little kid in the head. Kid, I wanted <laughs> to kill her family. Yeah, but he just shoots them down. Just mows that would have been down. funny. I would have been They're like, just this programs. is okay. This it is doesn't matter. It's right. not real people. Right. Uh, I did. There was a couple of interesting, like, if you notice the reflections, like, you know how they revealed that Keanu and Trinity didn't look like that to other people, just to us in the beginning. Like, there's some reflections where. I caught real quick. I was like, what the fuck oh. is that? Like, it doesn't look like but does that even matter? No. Nobody knows what they look like well, anyway. It, it was completely stupid. It, it hides. Like, it took him 60 years to find them, though, because of this. But I don't. I, I guess because of the game, right? That they, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There was I mean, there was a lot of like the part where they they bring Neo into the room, the stage. Right. Where it's the stage set up to recreate yeah, the, when he like meets the first Orpheus. Movie, yeah. And then they have the thing playing in the background. And it's on a stage, and they're telling him it's this a little story. Mu- it's a little much. It was like it's like this is so. <laughs> it's a little much. Like so fucking mad. Like so much. Yeah, it's like, it was like this is. Like, too how much. do you play this game? <laughs> well, but so it looks like a movie. Well, yeah. okay, hold on. There's a <laughs> couple of first things they showed. They cut to clips from those movies so much. I was like, we get it. Like you didn't need to watch two and three. They show you everything, and it was a little too much. But have you rugs? Did you see the this video? It's the demo of the Matrix Unreal Engine. A uh, video yeah. game. At, at it's first, we can in it that lo- game, right? It, yeah, but it looks like the fucking movie. So at first, I was the same way. I was like, "How do you buy as a video game?" This clearly, you're watching the movie, but they've been able to make this game that looks like a fucking movie now. Almost, uh, I watched some of it. It was frighteningly real. Like the fucking city looks amazing. No, it looks cool. Yeah, but yeah, they just kept showing them all the like movies. Super so much. hyper realistic. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and then. The fucking post credit scene, another fucking pointless, stupid thing where they go back to the the programmers and they're like, cat videos. We got to make the cat tricks. I'm like, really? Go fuck yourself. What is this? This is not, not funny. funny. Just as bad as the Hawkeye. Anybody on credit. Twitter who is defending the cat tricks needs to just <laughs> uh, unplug themselves from the yeah, matrix. That was just ad, yeah. I mean, the whole movie is unnecessary. All right. Let's rate it and rank it amongst the others. Uh, since Anthony didn't see the other movies, we're gonna start with you. Just don't rank it. Just rate it. <laughs> just rate it. Yeah. Uh, five and a half out of ten. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. I just wasn't it's very. Enter- I just wasn't very entertained. I thought some of the ideas, as we mentioned, were somewhat interesting, but overall, as a movie, I didn't. I thought I found some of the stuff to be cute, but like this isn't a movie that. I'll ever want to revisit. Yeah. And maybe I just didn't get it, but I, I, there's nothing about this movie that I want to revisit. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Rugs. I think that, you know, this is Lana Wachowski's 
property and uh, she could do whatever she wants with it. Uh, I just was very kind of disappointed in the, just the lack of originality or lack of wanting to actually go out on a high note and instead of doing this kind of, it feels like just a, like a, a critique on people. That's what it is. Yeah. And, um, which is fine, which the matrix has always been that, but it's also been other things as well. Right. And kind of to clip away everything else to get just to that. It didn't make for a great experience. So if I'm going to rate this, uh, on a scale of one to 10, I'm going to give it just a straight five. Okay. Whoa. Um, it's a movie. Straight five. It's a, mo- it it's a movie. It is a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah. I think you could like this movie and I wouldn't like be like, eh, hey, yeah, you could like now, it. Now, is it better than two or three and or three? No. No. Not, okay. It's the worst one. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, I, I would rather watch the Animatrix. Is it better than the Animatrix? No. You think it's the absolute worst one. Okay. Interesting. Certainly a divisive movie. Yeah. yeah. I, if you want to get, like, if I want I, Olive Branch, I'll get, I'll make it tied with Revolution. Two, right? Or three. No, three. Tied with three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, I was excited to see a new Matrix movie, but overall, I am walking away slightly disappointed, a little bit confused. But I liked some of, I liked seeing Keanu back. It's always fun to watch Keanu. Uh, I like some of the ideas. Again, great ideas, really bad execution, uh, and largely unnecessary movie. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. And I'm going to say, I will put the first Matrix as number one, obviously. I think the second Matrix has uh, still has an amazing action scene. Maybe even better than the action scenes in the first movie. Like that highway yeah. motorcycle action scene in the second movie is amazing. And so this movie didn't even give you that. So I will put Matrix 2 and then then this movie and then 3. Something like that. Yeah, it's tied with 3. But two, yeah, so I, I I don't know if I could be say it's better than 3. Yeah. I was very disappointed by three, yeah. by the way. Two has a fucking dope action scene. And a, and this one didn't even give you like the greatest action scene. You had people jumping out the window and you had him force pushing on the motorcycle. It's fine. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird. It's a weird movie. I'll, I'll say this. As I mentioned earlier, though. She's doing something different. Yeah. She, yeah. In terms of like the big, big, big blockbusters. Right. She decided yeah. to focus on something else go a different way with it yeah just go a different way with it. maybe not the most entertaining. <laughs> i just feel like that there's so much you can do with the matrix there and that is. people are just so short-sighted there is i mean you just look at ready player yeah. one right yeah mm-hmm. and and all the crazy possibilities that happen there and anything that things that can have just even want play saints row for five minutes or grand theft auto i, mean, I love the stories in the animatrix like that they had in that anthology those are all great ideas Show me the first robot that turns on them, and how does this thing happen? How about that? Anything. There's so many things you can do. Show me a guy who's just ruling in the Matrix because he's God, like what we should have seen about Keanu in the second movie. Yeah. Somebody do some of these things. Okay, good stuff. Let's do some news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. It's a dry one. It's very dry. Dry and gritty. Uh, well, this is going to be a show as a Spider-Man No Way Home sandwich as uh, we finally get to share uh, uh, comments from our listeners from our Facebook group about Spider-Man No Way Home. I've had these sitting here for like two weeks. I need to get them out. Jess Rivera says, can I get a Tony fucking loved it? I fucking loved it. Avoided every trailer and spoiler and it was glorious. For the scene where Peter gets his apartment, did anyone else uncontrollably yell out rent in a bad Eastern European accent? I said last week I did do that. I absolutely did. Uh, John Bellotti Jr. 
I was not prepared for all those feels. That ending, he says. Jose Joel Cazares. In terms of entertainment value, I love it. I avoided trailers and anything Spider-Man related for the last month. Decided to just go into the theater to get entertained. Favorite moments of the movie were all the old man jokes on Toby. Least favorite moments, all the Andrew Garfield crying faces. I, I Garfield has a better crying face than Toby does. Remember Toby's crying face when Uncle Ben got shot? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's not. It looked very <laughs> uncomfortable. Uh, Jose Ibarra says, apparently geek boners are frowned uh, in public. Geek boners? In a crowded theater. The theater experience for this film rivaled any film I've been to. It was so much fun cheering out loud with a group of strangers. The way this film played out seems like Marvel used this trilogy as the origin story for the true version of Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man rather than one origin movie to set things up. Yeah, it's a long, long origin rugs. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, no, so whatever. Okay. okay, I'm gonna break this up a little bit. I got a speak pipe. Oh, uh, three guesses who it's from. Here we go. Is it from Maddie? What's up, guys? Speak pipe king here, Matt Miller. Wow, I just wow. I just got out of Spider Man No Way Home. It's a Sunday night, and I can't even think straight right now. There's so many things going through my head. I'll keep this one short for Rugs' sake. Thank you. Um, I don't even care if you play this or not. I just wanted to hear myself talk about it out loud because I'm alone right now, and I gotta say something to myself. The, literally, that movie was beautiful. I mean. The emotions that I felt, the happiness, the sadness, the the action, the adventure, the set pieces, it was it was it was beautiful. I mean, just take that superhero movie title away from it and treat it as a regular movie, and that was an amazing movie. Oh my goodness! I need you guys to spend like at least a half hour covering all the Easter eggs that were in that movie because it felt like Easter Sunday in the theater. Anyways, I'm I'm so looking forward to hearing you guys talk about this, and they can literally go anywhere from this this point on now in the MCU, and I just can't wait to see what happens because that was literally insane. All right, guys, see ya. That was Maddie well, Matt, Miller. I hope you enjoyed last week's show because we spent a lot of time. Half an on. hour. How about four hours? And and a little bit of time this week. Yes. Yeah. How about 17 hours? Uh, Rugs, where would you put this in the MCU uh, list of 27 movies roughly? Oh, my God. Why are you asking me this? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, shit. <laughs> the, I think the easier question is it top 10? Definitely. Okay. Okay. I don't know about top five, okay. but definitely top no, no, ten. I'll take yeah. That. yeah, that's where it's been landing for yeah, a lot of fair. people. Top ten, top five. Uh, Rick Martinez says Spider-Man threw many punches. I'm very pleased. Yes, he did. Logan Janice from Mostly Superheroes Podcast says, just got home from the theater. Holy shit. I am still in shock. My fresh take, perfect, action-packed, better than anticipated. Going to watch it over and over and over. Wow, wow, wow. They knocked it out of the park. And Logan also wore a Jock and Nerd podcast to the theater. Geek Boner. Thank you. Jock and Nerd. He wore, he wore the podcast, no, a podcast shirt. I forgot to say the oh. important word. Because I want to know how he wears he, the podcast. He draped the he? podcast around him. It was audio okay. bits. Jamie Robinson, who is Mr. Throwback Thursday from the Mr. Throwback Thursday podcast. He said, am I the only one who totally geeked over the goblin in the purple no sleeve hoodie? Geek boner. And got chills seeing Wanda in the full Scarlet Witch garb in the Doctor Strange trailer. Oh, I loved Rugs. What'd you think of that? They finally put him in like uh, comics, purple and green. And turns out Willem Dafoe, uh, we knew this. He should never have had the fucking mask on at all. Yeah. I would still like to see like a what a mask would do that he could move like a rubbery in. mask like it's in the comic. Yeah, because I saw that shit from the thing and it looked pretty fucking awesome. But it would be also cool like if he did like a little bit of a hulky thing where he turned a little oh, green. That's a, you know a version like the ultimate Spider Man version. Yeah, where he turns into because he did thing. take a fucking thing yeah. that you know they did that in the Mark Webb movies a little bit where. They started. Well, they turn into a little literal goblin. Yeah, which I don't know if that's yeah. the right route. So Ultimate Spider-Man, Norman Osborn yep. turns into turns like into a, a giant goblin. goblin. I don't like a hulking beast. Yeah. No, I like don't like hulking. that. That'd be cool if his skin was a like green mm -hmm. too. You know, uh, Lisa, Lisa like, Morrison, who is a huge Charlie Cox fan, as we all know, says, "I mean, I was satisfied ten minutes in with the Cox, but honestly, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I don't know how they pulled off." Pull that off, but somehow they did. Still need to process a lot, but overall, I was happy with it. Peter is not a silly little boy anymore, and they got rid of a Stark Tech spider suit. Two things that, yes. You know what somebody yeah. else brought up is the Stark Tech would not recognize Peter anymore. You know, so that's great. Like, you can't even use it. It's not going to know him. Right. Mm. And Vulture, who is in Morbius, also now will for have forgotten that Peter was Spider-Man. He's the, he was the only other guy that knew that could have mattered. Right. So, and he can work for J. Jonah Jameson, taking pictures. Jeff Chapman says, more Daredevil. 
The cool youth pastor line was my favorite. That was a good line. They had so many good lines. It was good, they yeah. had so many good lines. Justin Zwerner, my favorite listener, <laughs> which part did you guys <laughs> cry at? Because I did not expect to feel did you cry? feelings during did you cry? this movie. Every part Andrew Garfield was in, I fucking teared up, yes. Really? I did. When he was talking, dude, when both of them come and they tell him about their Uncle Ben moments. The only part that I felt even remotely emotional was when they all show up and Peter's just dealt with yeah, uh, the May roof. dying yes. and they all hug him. Yes. And I was like, you know what? That felt that felt. Well, real. I like the hug at the end where, you know, Tom Holland is literally thanking the actors who came before him so he could do this. And it's like, thank you. That's a great hug. But. Dude, Garfield had me tearing up. Tearing up. The, those, yeah, I would agree. Though, I mean, I didn't, I didn't tear up, but I got definitely a lump in my throat for a f- few of them. Um, yeah, the, this the the rooftop scene for sure. When they're talking about like the loss they've had, and they're like trying to help him out. Um, oh, when he catches fucking MJ and he's fucking crying. Yeah, yeah, the MJ scene. I was like, oh, that's yeah, pretty, that got an emotional good. reaction. Yeah, that was great. Well. The the other one I had that you guys haven't mentioned is at the end when he notices that MJ has the. The uh the cut and he's like oh, he yeah. comes to that realization uh, he's like and he goes like thank you I'm back and off. he's like tearing up yeah. but he's like I gotta back he's off like I can't like, I can't can't be in I can't line. be with you guys and then did you notice we never mentioned the one Easter egg line where Ned goes don't worry I won't turn into a supervillain and try to kill you because he's supposed <laughs> to be hobgoblin Ned leads in the comics that's but right now he's gonna be a fucking understudy at the uh, with Wong at the Comartage or whatever does it bother you that MJ is in a, is a scientist. She is. Oh, yeah. She's a smarty. She's a smarty girl. She's she got smart, it to MIT. Yeah. She's not MJ at all. No, it's a different Other character. Like, but uh, even in the first movie, she didn't seem like she thought she was an artsy fartsy. Girl. Oh, they did play her off as like the Ali Sheedy of the Breakfast Club yeah. type. And now she's. But, but you had to be sudden, smart to like, be in Midtown High is what I assume. Like, they're all smart. Glenn Smith says, amazing movie. Love the Garfield redemption. Gregory Witzerick says, I love the movie more than I thought I would. Matt Murdock was my personal highlight, and it makes me wonder if he will show up in the final episode of Hawkeye. He did not. That would have been, like, way too much already. (laughs) Also, now that it's official that Toby was in No Way Home, does that mean that the Sam Raimi movie is technically the start of the MCU? Maybe. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Well, they're borrowing all the stuff from his movie, so it might as well the be the earliest. It's now the earliest. A, it, it's a uh, variant. Yeah, it's a variant of them. Maybe they're all variants. Uh, and then finally, Jesse Rodriguez says, "Love the movie, and I think they pulled it off, especially with the amount of content in it." I was, uh, and my theater was honestly more amped to see Charlie Cox in it than the Toby and Garfield reveals, possibly because we almost knew it was a sure thing. That new uh, handmade suit was the tits. I like that he said the tits. Nobody uses that phrase anymore. That suit was the tits. The pop of the blue hot damn. Willem Dafoe absolutely no killed it. Tits. No one says that. I, they should bring it back. Willem Dafoe Slaps. absolutely killed it in every scene he was in. The Garfield Rescue MJ was really well done, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I love the suit. It's the tits. Nobody says that. Slaps no. or fire. It slaps. When was uh? It was the tits. Was that the eighties rocks? When was that in style? Uh, you don't say it was the tits. You say it's, it's tits. Oh, it's the tits. I know we're from no, the Midwest. No, not no. The, the tits. The. It's tits. Oh yeah, the, the tits, tits, is, tits. Our, is our generation. We were saying oh. it's the tits. Oh, it's no, it's, it's tits. tits. Like, Just tits. Uh, yeah, it is you, tits. it's tits. Okay. Like those. That fucking car is tits. I'm too. It's tits. That car. Yeah. That's, that fucking Fiero is tits, no, bro. We, we, Yo, we were man. saying the tits. <laughs> The tits. Yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah, okay. Tits is cool. Slaps. <laughs> okay, let's end with some uh what are we watching? I watched a couple of good movies. You guys watch anything? Anthony, you watch anything fun? I watched anything fun. I've lit so I'll th- I'll say this. I've threw on uh the ringer, ringerverse, which is basically oh, yeah. like a competitor to us. I know, I've listened to some of them. But they're pretty good. It's, it's good. I'll, just, yeah. I'll give them yeah. I'll give them some credit. They're they're pretty good and they bring yes. up some interesting stuff. So yeah. no, nothing New that I've watched, but the Ringer Ringer verse is pretty good. They also have a prestige prestige TV podcast. They have a couple of good podcasts over there on the Spotify and the Ringer Network. Ringer Network, yeah. That's this, that this one specifically Ringer verse. I'm still listening to. They have that uh, sixty the sixty songs that define the nineties. Oh yeah, it's really good. There's a ton of episodes of all these songs that that you used to love, and he does a good job. They do a but, good. Um, that's a good one. If you're throwing another one, the the rewatchables is always a, oh, is a yeah. good podcast yeah. too, where they take an old movie 
and they rewatch it and then they talk about how like awesome it was and like they do these things where they they talk about the actors in their prime and like what their peak run was like what one oh, of movies great. were good oh yeah. we should do that i want to do that it's fun fun podcast rugs are you watching anything I finished Wheel of Time. Oh, you did. I I understand you had a little bit of a, a hitch there. What do you mean? No, I Foundation is the one I fucked oh, up. Oh, Foundation, the one you fucked up. I watched the. I'll tell you about. How I failed at oh, Foundation. Geez. Okay, how did first? I've still only watched four episodes of Wheel of Time, and now all of them come out the first season. How was it? How does it end? Is it a good? I ending? feel like that it, it did not end in a, in a grand Ooh. fashion. It was fine. Okay. It was fine, but it was a letdown. I watched The Witcher. Oh, you watched all of Witcher season two. I, I finished the season. I, I enjoyed okay. that. I thought it was okay. good. Um, I, the ending could have been better, but like it was at the end of the day, it was it was a lot more straightforward than the other Witcher, oh, which was the three stories that culminated. This is just one straightforward story. Right, maybe I'll watch it then. Um, what else? I, I I watched Foundation, but I failed miserably at it because I watched the last episode first. <laughs> oh shit! That's a by accident. I did I was, that with Game of Thrones. You did that with Game of Thrones. I remember that. Oh, uh, one. It was like one of the seasons, right, or the first season. First season. Yep. Oh fuck. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, and you still and you went back in and you watched it again. Yeah. Right. That's a confusing first. I've. You know what? I so I gotta wait a while and I'll try and watch. <laughs> it watch it the, does leave a sour taste in your mouth. Though. <laughs> it kind of ruins the whole. thing. It makes you feel real dumb. I watched the first half of Foundation and then I just dropped off and haven't gone back to watch the rest. Well, I can tell you how it ends. Yeah, you can. I guess you can. Was that a good ending? You don't even know you were watching. It was fucking great. Oh, it was? Oh, fuck. Maybe I, I can't gotta... wait to watch the next Shit, episode. I got to go back and watch the rest of it then, <laughs> you motherfucker. Imagine that. I figured out the story. You did. I figured everything out. And I was like, man, this is really fucking making me work here. I can't believe they're starting like with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of shit hasn't oh, happened. No. They gotta fucking catch up. And I'm like, well, I know this is fucking Isaac Asimov and it's dense. And then all of a sudden, like, it gets to the, I'm like, all right, next episode. I'm like, wait, there's no oh. more. I'm like, no, I Did didn't just I fucking just... watch the last episode. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, that's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. I fucking blew it. Uh, I watched two, uh, pretty cool movies. I think there'll be Oscar contenders. Okay. One is on Amazon, Amazon Prime called Being the Ricardos. Have you guys heard about this? Yeah. Uh, it's Lucy, Lucy, and uh, and Desi it Arnaz. Is. Right? It is Nicole Kidman playing yeah. Lucille Ball and Javier Bardem playing Desi Arnaz in one week in 1952 during the first season of Isle of Lucy, and it's a crazy week. You also have J.K. Simmons playing Fred William Frawley, and Nina Arianda as Vivian Vance who played Ethel. Uh, and I love. I love Lucy. I mean, it is an all time classic comedy. Lucille Ball, not only was she an amazing physical comedian, she was like the original. She's like the boss bitch. She was running the fucking show for at, at her in the 50s for her to have that much creative control and power and production studios. They did shit. They broke boundaries on that show that other shows hadn't done. So this movie documents this one crazy week where all this shit happened. Some of the things happening. Lucia Ball is kind of outed as checking a box being communist like 20 years ago. Desi Arnaz's uh, philandering and cheating on his wife kind of gets in the paper, right? Uh, and then uh, Lucy gets pregnant. And if you know the history of the show, this is the first show where they showed a woman going through pregnancy and having a baby. It's the first time they pushed beds together for a married couple to sleep in the same bed. Uh, and so you see how they force the studio and they had control. And they also did another thing, a rumor that I heard, and it's addressed here, how Lucy wanted uh, Vivian Vance, who played Ethel, not to lose weight and to stay kind of heavy set uh, because she thought more women look like in America look like her than they look like Lucy herself. And I also think she may have didn't want her to upstage her body a little bit, but they deal with that. Uh, Nicole Kidman is really good. She nails Lucy's voice. Like if you close your eyes, it sounds like fucking Lucille Ball uh, and her mannerisms and Javier Bardem. Also very good. I would expect this is uh, written by Aaron Sorkin and oh. directed by Aaron Sorkin. So the dialogue is fucking tits. The dialogue is tits. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, sounds better. Not it the does. tits. It's, 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 it's tits. So I'd, I would recommend this if you love Lucy or if you just wanted to learn about it. It made me go back and watch like I Love Lucy episodes 
which were on Hulu, it's a, but they're it's taking a fringe off. best picture contender. Just yeah, FYI. no, I could see it. I could see it. It was really really good. And then the other, I think we're going to see in the Oscars is the movie Don't Look Up. Yeah, I'm going to watch Netflix. that too. Adam McKay. Adam McKay, who did Vice and a couple other, uh, the Big Short, which are great movies. Who I did not like at, Vice, but you don't like Vice. I like nah. Vice. Uh, he's great at like satire and commentary on what's going on. This cast is wild. In this movie, you have Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, Jonah Hill, uh, Tyler Perry, Ron Perlman, Timothy Chalamet, Ariana Grande is in this, uh, Kid Cudi, Simon Rex, Michael Chiklis, Simon <laughs> Rex, my boy Himesh Patel, who's in a H. I just throwing names. He's in the HBO man. show Station Eleven. He's the brown guy in the movie. Uh, and it is about basically these astronomers. They find a comet and it's heading right to Earth and they have six months and it's going to hit the planet. It's an extinction level event. And basically everybody's response from the government to like the talk shows is just like, eh, whatever. What's Ariana Grande doing? She broke up with her boyfriend. Ariana Grande plays a pop star who like gets married or everyone cares about her more. And you know what this is, Ruggs? It reminded me, obviously, it's a commentary on climate change and how. You know, people like in the movie, there's people don't believe that there's a fucking comet coming, even though you can look up at the sky and see it. And right. uh, don't look up. Meryl Streep plays the president. And it's kind of like a Trumpy president thing because Jonah Hill is her son who's chief of staff. And her campaign, her campaign's motto is don't look up. Don't believe them. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. But it also <laughs> reminded me of idiocracy. Like they, yeah. they did an idiocracy. Whereas Idiocracy was like 15 years ahead of its time and totally overboard parody satire. Imagine Idiocracy about now and like kind of played straight. And it's like it, ridiculous reactions. And they, people would be, they'd be out there going, there's no fucking asteroid. I don't don't believe them. It's bullshit. Uh, it's, <laughs> I liked it. Another divisive movie. Some people really didn't like this movie. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be Reviews fun. Reviews are very mixed. They're very mixed reviews. I loved it. I thought Leo is great. Uh, it's It's good. I mean, I it's it, it'd be interesting to have uh, a movie that's not so politically one sided because yeah. I feel like that that's not interesting. I feel like I I like to see the nuance of different and uh, 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 it'd be played out like that's why I like Idiocracy right. because it wasn't like a political no. at all. It was just like people are stupid. Yeah, we're all gonna be stupid, and, we're, and, and this is how we're, we're all be gonna stupid. be stupid assholes because yeah. we're so fucking just reliant on technology and just willing to be as stupid and lazy but you as get, possible. It does, you have the same effect in this movie where like, oh my God, nobody, everyone's an idiot. They don't well, believe Adam McKay is, is yeah, not one to be thing. subtle. Yeah. He's not one. Yeah. I mean, Vice is basically, he makes fun of fucking Dick Cheney, and Dick Cheney Bush, entire yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Uh, but that's, that's Adam McKay's thing. He also wrote it with David Serrata, but I, I really liked it. It is divisive, but I definitely recommend you like everything, though. I don't. I, like mind, I don't good. mind divisive. Yeah. I just don't. Mean, I just don't. It, it becomes predictable mm. when you know, the, like what what's being. Divisive. Oh, there's a guy who's kind of like Jeff Bezos and Zuckerberg put together. That's you know, kind of running everything and played by Mark Rylance. He's really creepy. So that's another aspect. They, you know, it's like Amazon's running the government and they, uh, they call <laughs> the shots. Basically, <laughs> good stuff. But right. it's good. Uh, and then out this week, everyone, uh, the day this episode posts, uh, Book of Boba Fett. We're already moving on to the next Disney Plus show. Back to the Star oh, Wars. Was that Wednesdays? Wednesdays, Book okay. of Boba Fett. And apparently. Are we reviewing it? Should we decide I, now? No, I we, think yes. I think we're going to do it. I think it's weekly? only. Yeah, I think it's okay. only. I'm watching. Another so six I might or well eight. Might as well it. watch it weekly and review it. I heard rumor is the second half of the first episode has like a huge cameo. So they're already starting with these. And Cobra Kai's coming out. Oh, Cobra, Cobra Kai will yeah. be. Yes. Oh, fuck. That's the 31st. That's also this week. Shit. Okay. So we're going to review Book of Boba Fett weekly. And the minute everyone finishes Cobra Kai, we will be reviewing season four. Sounds good. They're already getting a season five, I believe. Whoa. So Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. Wow. I think that's what I saw. Which. Are you serious? I really think. I hope. I don't know how yeah. this four is going to end, but. I might, it might be at the end of its fucking rope there. Season five. How do you think we're going to be at the end of this? At the end of I mean, season what more four? is we, there to do? Are we going to want one more? We did all the movies. One more round? Are we oh, going to be like this? Not is only is that a stop. sure thing, Cobra Kai season done. five done filming ahead yeah, of the fucking that. premiere. So it's in the can, people. 
So maybe they're oh, setting shit. up. Maybe they have split it into like a two part story. But they've done all oh. the movies. There's nothing I, I left. Was, I'm with you, Rugs. I'm I'm skeptical that a season four after season four they have more to tell. But time we'll will tell. See. If they manage to stretch this into like a two season one story, the, maybe. yeah, they might. They might do that. Which hopefully that either makes it better or it fucking ruins the whole thing because they're gonna decompress it, or you add more to make it exciting. Well. At least we got Boba Fett, right? Aren't you guys? Excited? Got, I'm excited for Boba, old Boba, old uh, fat Boba. I can't wait to see him. <laughs> sure, I'm ready for that. That yeah, shit's gonna be dope. I can't wait to see him take on the criminal underworld on Tatooine. Okay, that's it for this week, everybody. Rugs, where can the listener find you? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at really rug boy. So uh, come by and say what's up. Give me a follow, motherfucker. Someone get him a glass of water. Yeah, he's got he's dry dry mouth breath. He's dry. Do I sound dry? Too much cotton in the throat. There, he's a yeah. puppet. He can't he can't play. Can't help so, it. That's yeah. what happens. You give him water, he gets heavy and sags. Biology, science. Yes, it's science, yeah. people. <laughs> There's no comet. Don't look up. Uh, visit the show notes jogginer.com slash four one five for all the links. Are we have a merch shop? You can buy t shirts and mugs and stuff with the logo with Rug Boy's face. You can uh, contact us and share the show. Most important thing you could do to help us out. Text this to a buddy. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. We'll peep you next time. This is going great. I'm pumped. Yeah, yeah me, too. me too. I really don't give a shit. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's really good. 